Welcome, Podcastville, Podcast Land, or whatever you consider yourself. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Nature Box. Nature Box has over 100 snacks that taste good and are actually better for you. All snacks are made from high quality, simple ingredients, which means no artificial colors, flavors, sweeteners, and especially no guilt, so you can feel good about what you're eating. And right now, today, Nature Box is offering you the Church of What's Happening Now family 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash Joey, J-O-E-Y. That's naturebox.com slash Joey for 50% off your first order naturebox.com slash joey who's better than nature box nobody take that fucking mule lee Are you crazy or what? Greetings, my brother. How are you this evening? I'm good. Am I crazy, though, you're asking? No. no. How good was that? Fucking killer. We, we, people don't know. We just watched about 20 minutes of Skinner and Almonds and uh, Stones. But that Skinner fucking still in my head right now. It's. I tell people when they're confused to just put that on and think about the scenario. I want you to think it's Oakland. It's not Kentucky. It's not Nashville. It's Oakland. It's a is that where that gig was? Oakland. So it's a stadium. It's 1977. They were at their peak, Leonard Skinner. It's a stadium. So it's part of, in those days, they did tours in the summers when I was a kid. Like the first show. Did I you ever wrote, see Skinner? No. I saw Ted Nugent with Aerosmith, Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush, Toto, and somebody else. That's the first show I ever went to mm. at the Meadowlands. We walked there and walked fucking back. I could hear Ted Nugent's guitar on the walk home on the fucking turnpike. Crazy. Because we yeah. left early because one of the guys was getting sick on the ass. We were like in the fucking seventh grade. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's like a throwaway. Like, oh, yeah, we were on acid and we we're. 12. A lot of my friends had tickets for Skinner at the Garden. Before they died, like two weeks or a week before they died. Well, they never made Ted, the gig? No, they were opening for Ted Nugent, but they were about to get switched. They were about to, and I, we've had this discussion on here years ago that I always tell people, seriously, what would have the turn been if Skinner would have lived? If Skinner would have lived, there would have been no cars. All those bands would have never survived in the early 80s. Well, they couldn't, they couldn't you know, no, no, keep no, up no. with that shit. Skinner was about to take, and then Zeppelin dies. So once Zeppelin goes down, Skinner is right there with the fucking stones racking up. Cause well, I, I didn't know until you played to me that Skinner had opened up for the stones. Skinner opened up for the stones at the festival, and that's when the word got out. Listen. Those fucking country motherfuckers. You don't want to make Well, those albums are fucking rock solid. Oh, rock solid. Yeah, they, the first two, the first two especially. Now, where'd they, should they, where'd they, the document, didn't they do those at the famous studio? No, I'm wrong. They did some shit at Muscle Shoals. At Muscle yeah. Shoals, yes, they did. They um, did. But yeah, they, I don't know if they did the out. Al- they did the albums with, um, I'm trying to remember. I think it was uh, the guy who played keyboard with Dylan. What's his name? Uh, the produ- Was it Al Cooper? Was that his name? You know, I read one of the books. So I think it was uh, 
fuck those books, Keith Richards, and they taped a lot in Tennessee and at Muscle Shows. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah, yeah. They did, they did a lot of that shit. They did, um, they went down to, they did a, uh, they also, didn't they show up at Chess Records in Chicago? And yeah, some they some did shit. some shit. That, they definitely went to, um, yeah, Muscle Shows, too. It's crazy. The Stones would go on tour and they would do a club in like Parsippany, no, in like Poughkeepsie, New York. I was right. Yeah. Al Cooper? Al Cooper. They would do like, to warm up some girls, they did like three shows around the country. You and I were just, you know, geeking out over, we both we have that uh, Blu-ray of uh, oh, the Stones, Stones and some girls in Texas, yeah. And they ripped it up on that. It was they great. It was it fucking up. killer. They yeah. ripped it up. And people don't know that the Stones were still fucking killer in 1980. Yeah. I saw them the first time in 78. And Farron opened up for them at Philadelphia. And I didn't even know what I was... I didn't even know what I was getting myself into, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, at that time, I had some girls and get your yayas out. If you want me to lie to you and tell you the truth. I had two albums by the Stones. I knew Sympathy for the Devil, and I knew a couple of other songs, but that's the two albums. But did I that was that show? They, like, they were tremendous. Yeah. He came out with an American flag on, started dancing. We were doing window pane acid. Keith Richards was fucking sensational, just sensational. He just whips it up on all those some girl songs. I mean, his guitar live is so overpowering from that little. You know what I'm saying? Like the way they tune it. The way well, he's you know, got that weird uh, he, guitar he's probably now. He's got like a weird open G tuning that he uses. But anytime I'm confused, I put that Oakland tape on. If I'm going to go to perform and I'm a little nervous about the show, you put on this is the Skinner one. The Skinner one from '77 because Just YouTube. You mean YouTube? Anywhere I am, I got YouTube, and I will put that video. I got to start, start doing. And it. look at the singer. Look at the guitar player. But you're totally right player. that they got that. Don't give a. F- they don't give a fuck. The whole message that they're sending is: we don't give a fuck if this is Oakland or we're rehearsing in our barn. We're gonna rip it up. Like, you understand me? You're never going to hear from us with our southern mentality that we're never going to give you a bad I mean, show. People didn't see it, but there was a fucking, you know... They had the Confederate fucking, flag, they put yeah. The, the fucking presidents on each side. It was like Mount Rushmore. Tremendous, tremendous, yeah. tremendous. It was crazy. Tremendous. The whole fucking video, every time I see it, I cry. If I'm home alone, I'll cry. Because that's the level you want to be to as a comic. That you go out there with his fucking belt buckle, and his boots on in Oakland, California. Well, as a musician, there, I will say it's a, there's a a little. It's a little. I wouldn't say depressing, but it's kind of like weird. To see, it's like to know that you're not, to see something you're never even get close to is kind of a bummer. Not no, a bummer. Oh, as a human being. Yeah. As a human fucking. How do you think I? Dog, I was, I was a week away from Zeppelin tickets going on sale, and I was ready to go. I was. I had all the bases covered. I had all the albums. I had in through the outdoor. We were ready to go. They were ready to announce it. And all of a sudden, fucking uh, Bonham dies. Oh, the yeah? wind got taken out of me. I was at Moff and Joe's, a little sandwich joint behind McGuire Chevrolet off Kelly Boulevard. Mm. It was owned by Fafaro and Joe Jumper. Moff and Joe's. So fucking, I'd go in there. They had the best Taylor ham and egg in the fucking state of New Jersey. And that's why I was when I got the news, and my heart almost broke. I couldn't. I don't remember. I don't remember. I wasn't around, but th- the second he died, they just they just disbanded right then. Yeah, they said it was over. Yeah, like, I mean, it should have. Nobody, been. nobody really knew. Uh, at first, Robert Plant went solo, and he did a fucking great tour. October, December ninth, nineteen eighty three. Me, Fernie Basasudo, went into the garden on a Tuesday night and saw fucking Robert Plant. With Phil Collins playing the drums. Oh yeah, Phil That's, Collins used to play the drums yeah, in a lot of crazy. Yeah, things. he used to go on tour with crazy people, Phil Collins, and that album, that one album by Robert Plant, the first two solo albums. Well, I'll, get, I'll check those out. Later. Did you guys try to memorize this stuff? Like you know how like like you can memorize songs. I lyrics? lived it. So what, so it's not like a piece of history. So you didn't you memorize read. it. You just know it. No, you you fucking live it. I lived all this shit. I just don't. I don't know what I'd do if I had t- Zeppelin tickets a week before. Fucking no, no, I didn't have the tickets. Tickets were about to go on sale. Oh, okay. In those days, this is how they did it. You mailed your tickets in. Your money in. There was no lines. There was no 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 no. There was, what was it? What was the what's the movie? Um, the song is the same. Yeah, where they 
they they get they get ripped off, right? Yeah, yeah, they get ripped off. So they had the Madison Square Garden money in cash, right? Right. And they charged up front. So when they called the the, the arena in Nashville, they go, okay, tickets are going to be uh, 15, 12, 50, and 10. This is the section. This is the amount of seats. When are we getting our money? And the people would say, what, are you fucking kidding me? And they'd go, yeah. Yeah. We pay. We're getting full. There's no deposit here. Led Zeppelin don't take deposit. <laughs> yeah, who's that, cra- that crazy manager that had? Yeah, that fucking gangster. Yeah, he would show up and he just he would just he's take six foot fucking it's like six. Two million dollars in cash, just put it in the fucking three ten. Yeah, he he was in on it. He oh, was yeah. in on it oh, at yeah. that time. That was a great little fucking thing they did. And that was nothing. Zeppelin was getting paid big money. Like they had a fucking plane with a fireplace and that motherfucker. Yeah, what's that DVD that came out actually recently that had all that shit? I don't know. It's just I think it's called Led Zeppelin. Just that you know, what I'm talking about that like four CD. D- you grew four. up a music fan, right? Oh yeah, that's big all. I lived, yeah, all oh, this shit. that's all. That's uh, what I live for. Yeah. And it's uh, funny. I like some of the old country stuff, and I like some of the new stuff. The country women that sing the two blondes fucking destroy me. The one angry one. Is fucking sensational. I get their names confused. Then there's the one that married to Tim McGraw. She's a fucking savage, too. Oh, Faith Hill. Faith Hill's a savage, and the other little tiny blonde. She'll fuck your world up with her voice. I love all that shit. But I saw that you tweeted me. Listen, bro, let me talk to you from the heart here, all right? All right, here we go. About 10 years ago, I was watching TV one day in a hotel room doing comedy, and I was high as a little girl. And I started going through the channels, and there was an episode of Hannah Montana being a radio <laughs> DJ and faking that she was crying. And she was getting the sponge and putting it on her face. And she, I don't know how old she was. She was a kid. I was too stoned to switch the channel. And I laughed so fucking hard. She reminded me like a, a, of a goofy Lucille Ball. So from that time on, <laughs> anytime Hannah Montana was on the kids show, I would fucking watch it. Yeah, I, I was going to say. I loved her as a fan. I love Miley Cyrus. I don't know. I love Miley I'm Cyrus. I'm not going to say I'm a Hannah. I've never seen Hannah. Oh, my Hannah. God. It's true. She's fucking great. But anyway. I'm going to go binge watch. And then somebody sent me something one day. They go, do you know Miley? I go, yeah. <laughs> they go, listen to this. And it was like on you. Uh, it wasn't even on YouTube. It was one of those videos they post on your thing. And you got to download something. And she was singing some stuff. Is that the Jolene you were playing on? Road? No, this is what before the Jolene. Yeah. That he sent it to me, and I didn't. It wasn't a video; it was an audio file. And I was like, "Who's that?" And he goes, "That's Miley Cyrus." And I was like, "Bro, that fucking girl's talented. Something about her always rubbed me." I just read today that her fucking uh, her. Did you watch on Saturday Night Live? No, I didn't see. When I found out Miley Cyrus was on Saturday Night Live, I watched the Miley Cyrus video before the UFC. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's how much of a fan I am because I wanted to see her music. Find Miley Cyrus season opener saying that live. This bitch is a savage. No, she's fucking good, man. I and I, I stick up for her when all my friends but tell me it's this show. video that she did, like after they did it, her single is still not on the top fifty and the album's flopping it. And they're blaming it that she stopped smoking pot and married that fucking dude. Well that's part of it. <laughs> That's fucking. Yeah, I was of, trying to get her. Get married, I was trying. I was bitch. trying to. I was trying to get her to be in a video a while ago. Oh no! But um, apparently I found the word I got was she quit smoking pot. She ain't doing stupid right, shit right, no more. Right, right, right. I used to see her right over here. She used to be at this oh, yeah? weed store three times a week with a little brother on North Hollywood next to the theater. Yeah, you got to keep smoking that weed. And once she got off the weed, because she started dating fucking Hulk's brother, whatever, fucking Mad Max's brother. I don't <laughs> fucking know these big blonde dudes no more. I would die for you. Is that it? Yeah, 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 one of them. Whatever from... What? Miley Cyrus is no joke. As dumb as people think it is, she grew up in that shit. Dolly Parton's her fucking godmother. Yeah, well, Billy Ray's from Kentucky. Right there, Bad Mood, Bad Mood. Just watch the first minute of Bad Mood. It's a corny fucking song in a way. I don't know this song. But watch her perform, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Miley Cyrus. In a bad mood. Ow. I wake up in a bad mood. I wake up in a bad mood. I always. 
Fucking around, guys. I think she showed a pussy that killed her. Once you show your little monkey, there's no no reason to hang out no more. Where'd she show her pussy? Yeah, once you show, see, like, where'd where'd she do it? I think she did something. She got naked somewhere, and that that uh, that could have killed her too. Well, I always tell I fucking people, pussy. don't show your fucking monkey, because once they see your monkey and taking the ass, they stop calling. That's rule number one. Guys, know that once. Well, I'll tell you what, that was pretty fucking good, man. bro. She does not fuck around and that jolene come on that version of jolene jesus killer. fucking christ so no 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 one thing about her is everybody else shows up on here they take three acting classes <laughs> this chick was born with it she could do comedy she could fucking sing and she could fucking act she's only what 20 uh she's got more money than god so she could take chances and she will take chances oh she don't give a shit i don't think no she don't give a fuck that's why she's so good her father's sitting there going jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> i gave away some expensive fucking sm- i'm a savage he is a savage oh yeah he tried to pick in the nashville he tried to pick up my aunt once in the old days she said was she hot yeah, she was pretty. Yeah, she's pretty. I mean, it's my aunt, so it's kind of you know hard for me to say. Yeah, I think she was hot. <laughs> we all have hot aunts and shit. You smell yeah. their bras when you're like eight and shit. Oh, I didn't you, smell a bra go- <laughs> again with the bra smelling. You're the only one I've ever heard do that. I've ne- I've never smelled a bra. <laughs> the only one. He every time he talks about a when bra, he gets like 11, a look in his eye. When I was about eleven, I used to sniff my aunt's bras in Miami. Ninety two, she was born. <laughs> and from time to time, she leave. Ninety two. She leave. I little, was whacking off in ninety two. Yeah, she leave a little hot water bottle. <laughs> With a little period stick, oh, with yeah. the tube, and I'd sniff the tube. And oh. <laughs> I'm a kid from the '70s, dog. I yeah, had to I find mean, find sexual you, pleasures in other places. You know what I was? Shit. I was thinking. You know, I'm so why well, I'm so happy to be back here. <sighs> if you don't mind me saying, is I was leaving because last time I was the first time I was here. I, I mean, I do all these, all the. I'm doing <laughs> Bert, Bert's tomorrow. I, like I love all these guys, but. I was when I was taking the Uber home last time. I was pretty really stoned oh, by myself. Oh, we offering you a star? I ain't, ta- I ain't touching a star. How about some reefer? I'll yeah. take some weed. Yeah, you won't even but, touch it. No, I, 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 I once you wait, see how many stars you eat? I, I, whatever you threw at me, I think it was eight. Once you we see that, w- once you see that oh, video Jesus of Lee, slipping, once you slipping. see that video of Lee, you ain't touching whatever he's touching. This is we're going deep tonight. He's West, throwing me two more at the we, moment. Look at look, they just stuck to the table like Spider Man. Go ahead, Lee. Eat Those are yours, Lee. Real quick. Like this, no big. You had, you had like three left. I, my three. You had like I had, two and a half. I, I had nine. No, you didn't. I had three. I had two batches. I had two batches of two, and then two <laughs> batches of three. So what's that? Two and two and three. That's fucking ten. This is twelve. And I had oh, a tushy. Here, here. And I ate a one hundred milligram. Lee, make sure you rice krispie man. treat because I did an extra five minutes of hip escapes today at the YMCA. So fuck you, cocksucker. <laughs> An extra five minutes. Uh, when do you? Uh, don't worry about that. Just eat the fucking Christ. stars. I mean, don't eating... ask questions. What was yeah. the question? Eat the stars. Don't ask questions. Yeah. No, but I was making a point here that I was I was I was stoned in my Uber home, and um, I was thinking why I dug it so much, and getting to the point we were talking before, I was like, you know, we don't have Joey Coco Diaz's in Lexington, Kentucky. You know, that I think that's what I dug so much about is like you know, like doing. I love Bert. I love Tom. But like, I kind of know like those guys. I know like there's no. That's why I'm approving of you moving to Lexington. There's no Lexington needs a Joey Diaz. What would I do? I don't know, but do you brought do, it up on Rogan. Do we do a radio show together in Lexington? Wake up, Lexington. Well, I don't know if I want to move back, but if you move back, I got to move back. We got to yeah, be roommates. Oh my god! Oh if my we god! Do a radio show with music, <laughs> and then we're doing a radio show in the morning from. Yeah, have my eight. have my mom make us dinner. Yeah, yeah, seven thirty, and then from seven thirty or nine. We'll so do for a people podcast. who don't know, you said on Rogan the other day that you don't want to stick around here too much more. You're too thinking, much longer. And there's no. two places you're thinking about moving, and, and I, I like I stopped in my tracks. Listen, I had my Lexington headphones on. And, you said uh, Colorado, Colorado or Lexington, Lexington, Kentucky, out of nowhere, my hometown. You say you're going to move there. Well, my family, I have family in Paducah, I have family in Nashville, and I have family in uh, Bradford. So the problem is, if we move to Bradford, it's like Puerto Rico. I mean, they barely got electricity. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You go get coffee at the gas station, 
and it's like but they got lee's chicken so oh cool yeah well lee's chicken hey they got starbucks and they got a dq so i'm in the town over but there's nothing there. I, I have to drive two hours to, to to fly home nashville my niece lives in nashville who i oh, love yeah. dearly so nashville always the problem with nashville is um it's just growing so fucking fast like right it's, it's not fast. like it's not as expensive, like, to buy a house. It's not as expensive as no, L.A., no, but no. it's fucking closer than you think. No, I know. And then you have but like, Paducah. Paducah's nice, but you could in Lexington, you could buy a mansion for not much. Please. And Lexington is, as soon as I saw the Christian... What is it, what is it about Lexington that you like? In my heart, the calmness. Yeah, I like my the, anxiety uh, goes down. Now, that day there, they had stabbed somebody on the other side of town. There's a bad side of town in Lexington. I, I wasn't aware of until I watched the news leave. <laughs> What's the matter? What's you going back to outer you, space again? Did you put something on that star? I, yes, I, I did. Soon, what did you put on it? Don't worry about it. You know me. You never trust a Jew with Vaseline on his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> i never seen it happen this fast. Just no, I'm not puke, so. No, no, no. I didn't put nothing on it. What's the matter with you? You're my brother. What am I going to put on it? I don't know. Don't don't worry. Acid and fucking. Well, I don't know. I might no. have something left over on my fingers. God damn morning. it, Joey! <laughs> no, I would never do that, dear. Yes, you would. What no, are you talking about? <laughs> you have, they have animated cartoons of them telling you about you switching rappers, which I think should be a federal offense. You want to call the cops? I should, <sighs> but I'm, you seriously gonna bar? No, I don't think so. Let me explain something to you. Oh my don't god! Even, don't, don't even mention calling the cops in front of me. <laughs> I'm 39 episodes in of Hota Hota JJ. Oh my fucking God. I am 39. Look at me. Do I look like I watch TV? I downloaded it for plane rides only in the hotel room. And I'm what, are you, wait, wait, what, do you, what show are you talking about? It's the show. If you click in Narcos and you look around, there's a bunch of shows <laughs> now. But a friend of mine goes, listen, watch that JJ. He was Pablo Escobar's number one Sicario. He killed 250 people. And was responsible for 3,000 deaths. And he turned himself in and they gave him seven years. Sammy Gravola is scratching his head going, Jesus fucking Christ. Well, his lawyer fucked him over. Uh, is that the right the same show? I think so. I don't know. I'm going to still. That's the it one. It was like the first episode. Something happened, right? Something that weird happened. Tremendous. I want to watch it now. It's about, but it's in Spanish. That's, I, I ain't got time for that. Shit. Yeah, you got to read the fucking fine print. I don't watch TV to read. <laughs> Me either. It's a nightmare to read it. But I still read it to check up on their Spanish. You know what I'm saying? I don't want them slipping, throwing yeah, shit you know at the Spanish? general public. Yeah, I'm Cuban. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Cuban redneck. They got two Cuban restaurants in Lexington. How fucking crazy is that? What restaurants? Can, we, can you look them up, Uncle Joey, please? They got two. I think I might have to go to Yelp, though. Where, where else can I Yelp. go? Google. Google two Cuban Lexington <laughs> Cuban restaurants in Lexington. I feel, I'm sure I've been. Hey, <laughs> there's two I, Cuban I want restaurants. You to, I want you to go next time you're there to go to Joe Bologna's. I want you to test out. Did you ever been there, an Italian place? Where, in town there? In Lexington, yeah. No, 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 no. It's like an old church. They can I ain't next to the fucking uh, hotel, next to the comedy club. Yeah, I've never been to that comedy That club. fucking food in that little restaurant. It was kind of gross, yeah. No. It's good? delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy took good care. I had, and guess what I had? Something I don't eat anywhere. But the dude goes, well, people drive here for this shit. And he was absolutely right. Fish and chips. I what? never oh. eat fish and chips. It was so yummy huh. because sometimes they give hey, you... Hey, is that the place that's got the good biscuits? Yes, next to the fucking whatever's next yeah, to on Broadway. But they, but they bring you biscuits ahead of time. If they want, I told them no bread. Uh, I just oh, got the fucking. Shit, yeah, yeah, tried those. The fish yeah. and chips was dipped, and it's not that. You ever bite into fish and chips and you get two inches of batter? Yeah. I don't like that. No. I don't like no batter. I like the. They dip it and it was just crusty around the thing. They, it was like two big sushi sticks of fish and chips. Ooh, nice. mama, with a little side salad. Yeah, cause like, I, I heard you happened? talking about a pizza on. Sounds like you. You know, I don't know New York pizza and all that shit, but I think Joe Bologna's in uh, Lexington. Lexington is real good. I want you to try it next time you're there. It's called, uh, excuse my pronunciation, but Brasabana yeah. and Old San Juan. Look at that. They got two fucking Cuban restaurants well, I think I've been, I've been, in Lexington, Kentucky. One of the restaurants is from a guy that sounds like me because that's how I got turned on to the whole Lexington experience. Was My brother-in-law <laughs> went to Lexington. He called my wife and he goes, we went to a Cuban restaurant. The guy sounds just like Joey. Crazy. I'm going to go. I'm going there. Well, I'm going for Thanksgiving, so I'll, I'll check it out. But it was green. It was beautiful. Yeah, the horse farm. The people farms were very and, nice. Do they have Cuban fried rice? 
I don't. I didn't look at the menu. Here's the deal, bro. You should bring it for a side dish. Here's the deal. And I don't want nobody to get offended here. <laughs> when I go to a town, people will ask me if I want to smoke a joint. People ask me if I want to go to a bar. <clears throat> I'm telling you about America, okay? Wheeling, walking. I don't want you to get offended. <laughs> Junior. Junior, when I go to any part in the country, people ask me if I want to get high, if I want to do blow. Women act like fucking jerk-offs. They have no respect sometimes, <laughs> even though I'm a fucking dirty old man. Sometimes <laughs> it even shocks me. When I went to Lexington, guess what people were asking me? What's that? If I like to come over their house and eat dinner. Really? Would I like to come over their house and then mama would... Yeah, they're, they're friendly people. It's a different animal. Listen, people give me their phone numbers going, man, next time you come to Lexington, I got a boat you can stay on. I'll leave you the fuck alone. You know, shit like that that people nowhere in the country say to me. People want to get high. People want to do this in Lexington. People who just listen to a fucking podcast will invite me over to their house for their mama to make a home and brought their mama and good food? to the fucking show. I don't know if it's good food, but my point is... <laughs> it's always decent. That fucks with guys like mine head. Yeah. Because I've always looked for that. Yeah, because that's what I was saying. Like, you I'm know, always, Did I go to their house? No. I didn't have time. I was only there for three days. But I brought like seven phone numbers home and I stapled them just because uh, that's a different feeling, bro. That's old America. Hey, man, you don't need to stay at no hotel. Man, I got a bed. And him and his wife looked at you. We got a bedroom over there. What? Cable TV. Our dumbass kid moved out to fucking Louisville paying rent. You, you know, that type of shit. Yeah, you which, don't get that other place. Which yeah. you look at and you judge at first. You go, what the fuck? And then you go, whoa, 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 wait a second. This is America. Yeah, because that's weird. Because, you know, that's all I know is, you know, born and raised in Lexington. and uh, So to me, you know, where you're, where you're from, all that New York shit, that, that's the shit that blows me away. I don't even understand it. No, you, yeah. it's a different. Imagine, animal. imagine like that where you're talking about with those people with inviting you to dinner and then spending a weekend in New York playing a gig. It's fucking. It's like I'm on Mars. I think a lot of people on both on from each place are just terrified of the other. Like when I was gonna drive to L.A., people were telling me like to not stop in like southern towns because I'm Jewish and like like it, it, it like don't stop for too long and be careful what you say and oh they won't and it was yeah it was the nicest. Like it was, the, it was the, like the most uh, welcoming. I, I like experienced the entire drive. They were even, like even the like cashiers at the gas station were nice. Yes, yeah, because you got you got to be nice. You can't fuck around in those small towns. You know, let me tell you something. I'm two o five West Eighty Eighth Street raised <laughs> to the third grade, while at the same time I was being raised in Union City, New Jersey, across the bridge. While at the same time I would spend my summers in Hundred Forty Eighth Street. And then in Miami, I've been away from there officially on and off since 83. I went back in 93 to try comedy. I've been gone from there since 1993 officially. What's that, 27 years, right? Yeah, it's 20, am, 24, 24 years. I am un New Yorkerized, which means that even though I'm going home to see my family and put flowers on my mother's grave and do the things I do, I'm a fish out of water there now. You don't feel at home there anymore? Not at all. And as a matter of fact, I like Gotham because it's not on a main avenue. It's in the middle. When I go to do the stand and all the other clubs in New York, like when I go uptown, comedy club, whatever, that place I go down 77th Street, it's too close to the corner for me, brother. And when I stand close to the corner, the speed of the cars going by, it takes me a little while to acclimate. Well, I yeah, I still fucking. You understand? I, mean, I, I, live, try, I try not to do gigs there. I can't. I just can't. I live in traffic here, so I don't remember yeah. the realization of people doing ninety anymore on a fucking side street. So I'll never forget being at the stand one night, but more at that other club. I'm off of Broadway. It's thirty. It's twenty yards off Broadway, and I remember going to the corner Lee, and it was like I think I called you. I couldn't breathe. I wouldn't tell you. I just wanted you to talk to me about something. I asked you a from what question. anxiety. Yeah, the cars moving, the speed, the lights, the horns, the whole fucking noise of that city. I grew up in that city. It brings back, like, uh, not bad feelings, but feelings how I used to feel when I lived there when I was 19, desperate. 
you know, always looking for the next fucking meal or the next pigeon. You, you think it kind of gives you, like what we were talking about before, like kind of the bad memories of the drug days and shit like that? No, it's a bad memory of fucking everything. Really? My mom just dying, be me and a kid. You know, I would walk around the city with something that was stolen. I would sell it in different parts of the city because only that I wouldn't get traced. I got a good mink. I had some Jews I take it to. I got a diamond. <laughs> You got a couple of diamonds. I had a few different Jews that there's no paperwork. They pay you cash. You got to wait for 20 minutes because they got to go in the See, vault. that's what I'm saying. We don't get these fucking stories in Kentucky. There, ain't, there ain't no minks and selling, yeah, yeah, selling yeah. minks to Jews in Kentucky. No, I'm just saying, like, it's uh, it, it's those type And they're fun memories. I have a lot of fun memories. When do, when do, when do you start feeling this way? Uh, when I land, I'm cool. When I go to Jersey, I'm cool. When I go to eat and I see George and Lubes and Gia the first night and those dudes, I simmer down a little bit. It's Friday when I go into the city. These are big shows for me. Like, this is Gotham, 300 seats. I can't go in there and fuck around. I got no fucking material. <laughs> You know, so it's going to be a fucking I'm, fun I'm day. I'm laughing because you say that. You, he literally said that driving down to record every CD we ever recorded, every every show <laughs> well, I've ever been to. Material. Well, I got four CDs. With you. I'm two for two. Well, two I got a, bombs and two of them are men's. I'm well, yeah, well, the first one was the one you were talking about. Yeah. Well, I got a question. So when you got when you do, like, you talk about, like, what do you say when you're doing clubs? Like, it's training or something. What's the word you use? Working out or something? Yeah. Like, do you do, do you wait for your big material for, like, the big like the like do you do see it bigger shows or no no Are you just so all, let's all say, clubs let's say i got three things on a piece of paper that i've been thinking about i went to the store and i tried two i had five to start off with but i went to the store and i threw two of them in and they bombed in between good stuff right like you hide a joke and you it's a samba it's a sabotage i listen for the reaction if there's no reaction i try to rewrite <laughs> the attack or well, sometimes I just forget it along the way. So I focus on what I have. So when I have two weeks of those, that I have nowhere to go with them, I'll bring them to the ice house and just talk. This last time wasn't a good one because I was forgot what I had to talk about. I lost my notes. I put them on a piece of paper and put them in the back of my pocket. And the next day I couldn't You're fucking find them. Yeah, because I mean, I, I mentioned, because we're doing... Uh my my show here is is two thousand seats and I'm like, I actually brought it up. I mean, I don't I don't want to talk about money or that shit. But I was like, you know, I wonder if like you know Joey or somebody would open up. And then it's like my my people are just like, no, those comics, you know, they like Joey could play that in his sleep. He ain't gonna open up a show, you know. I'll come down there if I'm in town December third. I'll look. Call me tomorrow. Yeah, well, I gotta, you know, we got I got paid. I, I love. I definitely I love to do a fucking little country. Gym. Here, here's here's my here's my idea of another op- idea for an opener. Just fucking spotlight comes on. Lee takes a star. Eyes roll back in his head. Passes out. Lights off. We'll have to three, get like we'll have to get like a ten thousand milligram star made up or something. Can I three hundred three hundred bucks. <laughs> you yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, can I get like a, a drink ticket or something? Yeah, two uh, two hundred two hundred and ten drink tickets. <laughs> Let me ask you something, brother. What is your demographic at these shows? What are you getting? <sighs> That's a good question. It changes everywhere. I mean, uh, West Coast is. There's a little bit of the hipsterish. I already got we uh, we got one call about um, uh, bikers wanting to do a ride down to the show, like motorcycle guys want to do a ride there. It's it's a real it's a it's a cool it's becoming a cool mix of like guys who love just crazy shit, country fans, kind of hipster dudes, bikers. Um, we're finally getting women to show up, which is cool. Um, the first tour I did was a fucking sausage fest, beginning to end. Um, but these are yeah these West Coast shows. Sorry to keep pipping my shows, but are like our four will be our four biggest four biggest shows I've done. It's all these are all theater shows, and we've been doing clubs for for I mean bigger. It's, it's I can I can feel it getting bigger, and these this will be a nice way to end the year I think. Now when you're in the South, do you do a lot of shows in the South or? In- yeah, I do, but. Um, I'll do I'll do Lexington. I'll, you know I'll, every time I'm near near Lexington, I want obviously want to play my hometown so I can s- see family and shit. But I don't know. The South has a weird reaction to what I do because, like in Nashville's got it's like Nashville's become very hip, but also very corporate too. And I'm not really accepted on either. So the corporate guys are like fuck you with your dirty shit, 
and the hipsters are like, you know, you're not politically correct. They don't really, you know, so I'm, I'm kind of ostracized from both groups, so I try not to play Nashville. How's Louisville when you do Louisville? How, what's- Louisville's good, but it's weird because the, 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 the sports rivalry is so crazy that I'm not making this up, but, like, people, like, will just scream, you know, fuck the cats. I'm just like, dude, it's just a fucking country show, man. Like, we don't have to, like, like but that's, like, their whole life is Kentucky versus Louisville, and they know I'm a Kentucky fan. So, like, guys will just scream fucking, you know, go Cardinals. And, like, who's into sports? I mean, I, I love I love sports, but, like, who's into it that much to scream at it during a fucking show, you know? Listen, I did a, the show that I did in Lexington, the opener, was in Louisville. And he was fucking hysterical. I have to look at my phone and get his name. He, uh... Yeah, I never saw any. I never. I've never oh been. Oh my I've, god! I've never been. This to, guy was funny. I've never me. even been to comedy on Broadway. But on Friday, he did this fucking Rick Pitino joke, and it was filthy as fuck, and the place disintegrated. He blew the top <laughs> off it. He said this joke. He goes, "This fucking guy," and he goes on and on about Rick Pitino. He goes, "How did it start?" He goes, "It started with him bringing a hooker into a fucking restaurant." And then things get no worse. He gets her pregnant. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're Rick Pitino. You should have fucked her in the ass. And I fucking, <laughs> dog, I almost fainted. I almost fainted. And the room blew up. So I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, that's. As the, soon as he the, talked about college basketball, the stakes were fucking up. It went up. Ears were up and they were ready to attack, Jack. Because they're sitting around all year and then all, all of a sudden basketball season starts and they're the center of the universe. So it's like the first time that they're in the spotlight, you know. Is it because they have good uh, teams? Like, I would think the football yeah. game would be a lot bigger. No, I, fo- but, but, but their football team sucks. Let me do, do me a favor. Yes, sir. The Wildcats won in 1970 something, the NCAA. 70, 78. Football, 78. Basketball. S- basketball. I think the guy's name was Jack the Goose Givens. Jack Givens, yeah. Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with? Look at this fucking guy. Joey Bananas. These motherfuckers think that I just fell off and he scored 50-something points. 42. Who the fuck do you think you're dealing with? 42. Look this it up. kid went off on a Monday night. He went off against Duke. It was against Duke with Mike Jaminski in the middle. Before, f- before Duke was Duke. Before no Duke was yeah, before Duke was Duke. This was it was uh I had written letters to that coach. Bob, whatever was his name, and the t- the lineup was Oh, he had a good fucking team. He had Mike Jaminski. And here's the beauty about Mike Jaminski, uh Lisa I had. The Jaminski that he played in the finals and he was something like seventeen years old. Because he was such a fucking scholar that he had already done high school. He graduated when he was 12. <laughs> like, I'm 12. Like, what, what do you want me to do? Like, they made him, they redshirted him for five see, fucking I never, years. I, I, I didn't know the stats, but I don't, I don't, I never, I didn't see the game. Yeah, look, you, look, look it up. See, see if I'm right. 42. Up. Yeah, no, it was definitely 42. Made the cover of Sports Illustrated. What do you want me to yeah. Google? Jack the Goose Givens with a fucking layup, and it said fucking Jack the Goose Givens goes off against fucking. And those, Duke. Guy, those guys, um, you know, that's their glory days, and they don't. Oh my god! And they, and they don't move; they come back there. Yeah, no, no, no. no. They, they, why would they? Yeah, people they they buy they, they buy car dealerships. Those guys, they get on fucking sports. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. Yeah. I love all that. I think Kyle Macy was on that team. Is it too, Gibbons? Maybe. Gibbons. Gibbons. Oh, Gibbons. Just put Kentucky Wildcats championship, and the year will come up. I've never seen anybody spell Gibbons that bad. Oh, there it is. G i a v e n s. Jake. I got um, Givens. 41. These motherfuckers think I And they won the title. On, put it up on the big screen for a second, Lee. I want you to put up the Duke, the, the oh. 71 Duke starting team. Let me see you off scratch. It had to be Gene Banks. And then we didn't win it again until I Mike think, Jaminski. I think 96. John Spinarkle. Listen to the starting team, Lee. So, you know, put Duke 19, whatever. They played the. They played that fucking team. They played the Kentucky Wildcats. See if I'm wrong. Kenny Denard, Gene Banks, Mike Jaminski, John Spinarco. If I can get four out of fucking five, that's a fucking memory, oh, my oh, brother. Fuck, yeah, I can't. And I smoke more dope than fucking half of... No, no, no. It had to be the next... What, it was 77. Oh, 78. 77? Okay. 78. Whatever the team was. Where's my glasses? Well, I, can't, I couldn't name one of the Duke guys. All I remember is Jack the Goose Givens. Yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, there it is. Who is the starting team? Who is the starters? Let's I can find it. And John Spinal, Jim Spinaco, Mike Jaminski, Gene Banks, Kenny Denard. That I, I had three out of whatever. Kenny Denard was my coach at fucking five star basketball camp. Oh no way. And he used to show up with a sweatshirt with a skunk in the hood. A baby skunk. And he'd go, Don't hit me in the back because you'll wake up the skunk. And he'd show us the fucking skunk. <laughs> And the next year, there he is against fucking the Kentucky. Yeah, I went to I went to Kyle Macy basketball camp. Remember that guy? What was his name? Kyle Macy. Kyle yeah, Macy. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah, he was good. All that shit. That that was that. I lived but, for that shit. But though. I know what you're. But like, the, the, it it really does. It, it it controls the town to to a point where like we'll play Lexington between songs. People just start going cats. C A T S. Cats. Cat. It's like, come on, man. Bro, they live for that. I and mean, I listen. Think of how simple your life is. That this is the thing you believe in so fucking much. Yeah. If you're filthy rich in those towns, you donate to this shit. Oh, yeah. They support they, this they, shit. They give you... If you look at the uh, yearly fucking envelopes, it'll make your wig fucking flip. I, I, I agree with you that they probably shouldn't scream it out at your show, but I love going to any sporting event in Boston. I, no matter who they're playing, no matter what sport it is, a Yankee suck chant will start... At some point, and it, it, it still makes me smile. It is, I mean, I yeah, know what you're saying. It's kind of an athletic kind of, event, but not a fucking music thing. Yeah, no, but it is, it's kind of fun just because it's like, you know, what else are they going to cheer, you know? I love if somebody just yells and you play with it. That's what you do. Turn it around and just play with it. Yeah. You Sometimes know, they, they scream Pussy King, which I prefer that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah. How's touring, brother? How was your say? I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit over it, to be honest. Um, as the shows get bigger and I can... You can calm down a little bit more. It's been better. Um, I don't know. I just think it happened a little too late for me. I guess like like we were talking before. Like I, I gotta like I do like a bunch. I'll do like a. I didn't do what what it's called sober October or whatever the fuck they did. Like Octo- I was like I'm gonna you know what I'll st- just for fun I'm gonna try to stay sober too. The first two days of October I'm gonna op- I'm gonna open up for Kid Rock in Nashville. Like I can't fucking stay sober for this. No. That that crap. how'd that go? It was great, but the cra- I mean, it was actually this festival he puts on ca- called the F- Kid Rock Fish Fry, which is, it was crazy. It was like, I've never seen people, like, it's almost like they wouldn't let you in without wearing some kind of American, you know, American flag apparel and, you know, tattooed guys, you know, so everyone, it, it was it was debauchery, but it was fun. Um, Do they really cook? Is yeah. Is they yeah. really fish there? Yeah, they have all. Yeah, they uh, they unveiled the Kid Rock uh, Madame Tussauds uh, wax Kid Rock, which I guess at the Kid Rock Fish Fry is a big deal. But um, but it was. But yeah, I just it's not. You know, I can't be that. I can't be sober when everyone's fucking off their minds. You know, it's just weird. Everyone's staring at me, and they're like the five thousand you know drunkest fucking dudes I've ever seen. I mean, it was a fun show. It was just you know. It was just, it when you're on crazy. stage, what do you like to do? A couple cocktails, a couple of joints, a couple of I'll, I'll do a few beers. and a, My thing is a f- I'll do like three beers and a shot of bourbon. And then maybe a little bit of a little bit of weed. What's your bourbon of choice? Makers. I like that very much, too. Yeah. I'm a, I think there's some makers in there if you want to buy I'm a Kentucky them. bourbon guy. Yeah, but I, tr- I actually, I've stopped smoking weed before the show because I can't remember my lyrics. I'll wait till after, no. I'll tell you what's a motherfucker when you have two shows and you get high. And you can't remember if you said that joke already. So you deliver the kind of thing. Well, I never have to do that, yeah. Oh, my God. You got to deliver it a little tamely just to see if you said it already. Until somebody goes, you said that already. It hasn't happened. It used to happen when I used to perform <laughs> in Miami. Because there was uh, one of those frozen drink places across from the uh, improv. And there was 140 proof to one of them. Call a cab. <laughs> you, you, had, you had to drink three of them. Why do you get the strongest of everything? Dog, you- because we don't fuck around here. <laughs> there was like an 80 proof that was chocolate. I mean, they were delicious. I have a show. Maybe I'll Lee, get a small they were, one. It was like, listen, Lee, it was mm-hmm. 1998. It was <laughs> way before the Mocatino and the whole thing. And these people in Miami and in South Beach, Wet Willies. 
And in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, Charleston's a cool city. Yeah, they had these, you never been there? They had these frozen drinks. There's always chicks with bikinis. <laughs> they got fucking guns. It's just like a frozen <laughs> yoga place, okay? What's you know this place that's got... It just sounds like a You know party. those frozen yoga places that you frozen like yoga. I've never been to a frozen yoga okay. place that's got girls go, with bikinis and guns. There's two guys behind, there's two bikinis behind the bar. <laughs> They come over, hi, how you doing? It's like, who is for real? But where do the guns come from? I don't know. I'm just, imagination. <laughs> Run with me, cocksucker. What's with all the <laughs> right. questions? That it was 60 minutes? Yes, and. <laughs> so next thing you know, you they have like the different proofs. Then there's this red stuff. And it's called call a cab. And it's made with grain oh. alcohol. And they won't give you more than three of them. And I would go over there early, drink one, maybe drink two. And then while the headliner was on, after I got off... I would go back there. By that time, my drug dealer would show up. I'd put the money on the bar. He'd throw the napkin on the floor and walk out. I'd look around, pick up the napkin. I'd go to Wet Willie's, get one of those little red drinks, walk to the condo 50 yards from the comedy club. I'd put a lid on the fucking Wet Willie. I'd put it in the refrigerator, grind up the Coke, leave half of it at the condo for a victim. Take the other half with me. You know what I'm saying? I got to lure the victim. I'm like. So those were the touring days. Yeah, I'm like Cosby on roller skates. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm out there. I'm out there giving our yum yums and shit. <laughs> See, that sounds like you know, that sounds like a. Like, oh my god, that, that sounds go, like the days. To I me. would walk through Coconut Grove looking for a victim, and then I would bomb. Oh my god, you were the comedian, yeah. <laughs> What's going on with you? Well, no, That's like no, the no. nice part of of, of, of yeah. it was until yeah. the, well, it was it, but by this time in '98 it was a a fucking party, and and I didn't know it when I went down there, and one night I go I'm starving I can't sit in this condo no more and all of a sudden it was like fucking people all over the streets, and I went to eat and I bumped into some waiters and they go come over here and one of them said do you want to do a blast and that was it that became my favorite spot. Like I was telling you before. Yeah, I've never played Miami. We I would do Miami. Time. I would do Houston. I had El Paso. And you develop these spots where you know you're going to be taken care of. You know the guy that's got the best shit. I had all their phone numbers. And I would call them a week before I went down there. Yo, I'll be there Thursday. Get the party started. Really? No shit. Can I get tickets for the show? We well, get whatever you want. Just bring the heavy fucking package, all right? If it's a grand throw, an extra two spoon for your Uncle Joey. I'm running light these days. They come, I give them the money. By the time I got to the comedy club, I'd had the package in my pocket. I would not do it before I went on stage. So I knew that <coughs> whether I was opening up for Rogan or headlining in those days, it was all, it, I could do the shit I couldn't get away with here. Why is that? Because my wife was my girlfriend at the time and I lived with her. Her and I lived together in Hollywood. So, I couldn't go to bed with my heart pounding out of my fucking shirt with a victim next to me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she would wake up and go, are you okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a couple of sodas. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> caffeine really gets So, yeah, me. if I finished my package at 2, I'd go to bed at 4.30. If I jerked off four times and smoked a fucking pack and a half of cigarettes and drank water to come down, I'd fall asleep at 4.30. But those nights I want to snort till 6.00. She'd get up for work and bust me, so I couldn't do those nights. When I went to Houston, Miami, I had all my little Myrtle Beach. I used to go to Myrtle Beach way back when. As soon as I got to the club, this old guy with a ponytail would come up to me and put the package in my hand. Then he'd come back Sunday, and I'd pay him when I get paid. That's how it went. That's Crazy. how fast it went. So every city was like down to a science. I had every city. By 1998, if I went to Michigan, there was a few places in the Bible Belt that fucked me. Like what? Clark, Tennessee. Is there I, don't, I don't know Clark. Something like that. Clarksville, something, Tennessee, Clark fucked me. Yeah. That was a Tuesday night. And I did, in those days, they were called something. There was It was the company who managed Carrot Top. And they had a bunch. In fact, I'm working for them in Charlotte. Nice people have... And those guys. But at this time, they were a big management club, a big management team. They managed uh, whatever I said and a couple other comedians. And they even were the producers on that movie that, uh, what did I just say? What was his name? Carrot Top, Top Made. But they had these rooms that from North Carolina, from fucking the Bible Belt in West Virginia, 
where miners were coming with mascara on their eyes and shit. Oh, shit. All the way down to the Bahamas. If you wanted to go to the Bahamas, you could go with them. They still do it. I think they still book it. Don't pay no money, but you can take your family. Can't curse on stage. Why not? Because as you sang Uck from the tail end of the fuck, <laughs> there'll be a helicopter landing right next to you on the stage. They won't even let you back in your room. They go to your room and bring your possessions to you. That's how quick the party ends. Why is that? There's no, I slipped. I don't know. It's got to be perfectly clean. It was when I was coming up. When I was a fucking feature act in 95, I was supposed to go down there. And a week before that, the guy was supposed to go down there. His appendix blew up. Something happened to him, so they had to cancel the gig. And a month later, I was telling somebody the story. And they're like, listen, bro, you're fucking lucky. And I go, why? They go, you have to be tip-top, spotless clean at this resort. And I go, are you serious? And he goes, listen, they'd stop you on stage, take you to the lobby, 10 minutes of helicopters there, taking you to the fucking ship to get you to fucking, I forget how they had to get you off, but they would get you off immediately. Well, why, why were they like that? Just because it was... Something, you could incur something. There was something going on. I, I, bro, I never ended up going down there. How funny do you find yourself in positions when you came in here? You were very kind to bring your new album in. Wheeler Walker Jr., congratulations. Thanks, man. <clears throat> but on the label, it says that you were banned from Walmart and somebody else and well, somebody Walmart, else. It's Walmart, Kmart, and Best Buy. Yeah. And you think about it. This is this is this is real country. This is real country. The the lyrics are a little fucking off. But this is real country. Can you just explain how the banning process goes? Like, do, well, do you I get mean, like a letter that says you're physically? Well, they b- said they, what they said was I needed to make like a lot. All those hip hop albums are there, but they make the cl- they sell the clean versions there. They sell the clean versions. Yeah, so they told me send us the clean versions. I go, I'm making no fuck clean version. Fuck you. And then you can't like just sell the dirty version. They go, no, you you know you can't be sold here. So I was like, I took a fucking. They said they want me to put a, you know, parental guidance sticker. I go, fuck that. Just put banned from all those places sticker on it. On that. Because, you know, I own my label. You know, I run everything. I own the songs. I don't have to put shit on it. But I want, I want it. I, I, I paid for that sticker to put on, you know, banned from all those stores. And um, I wear it as a badge of honor. You know, I don't want to, you know. Listen, if the song, if a clean song came in my head and I wanted to sing, it's not like I'm just. Sitting down, like trying to think of the dirty. You know, people come up to me all the time, like I got a song idea for you. You know, you know, pussy farts. I'm just like, you know, I need chords here. You know, like, like I know, I know, like bad words. It's just not about the bad words. Like, it's got to be good music and good country. So, um, like I said, if a clean song, came, if a song came to me that wasn't dirty, I'd sing it. I, I, it's not that. It's just when you pay for it yourself, I just sing what I want to sing. What I what I the stuff I want to sing is the shit. You know the country. You know in the old days I used to I, it used to be. Listen, it wasn't dirty, but it was like it was the, the truth. You know, and nowadays the truth is um how we're talking right now. Fuck shit. It's like I just can't not I can't talk like that and then not sing like that. It doesn't make sense, fucking sense. It'd be like like you were just saying like you doing a clean show. It's like or if you you paying to do your album and then. For some reason, just telling Lee you're, you want to do it clean. You know? Wheeler, it's not like I'm a bad businessman. When I started, I bought the whole thing of hook, line, and sinker of being a clean comedian. People came to me like the fourth time on stage and said, you got a lot going on for you, but you got to get that dirty stuff out. You got to eliminate that fuck. And I started thinking about it. Like, oh, you're right. And I started putting a suit on. Yeah. Right off the bat. By the time I was on stage the eighth time, I started wearing a suit to a contest. And then I wore another suit. And then the night I won the contest, I wore another suit. And then after that, I had a credit card from this one uh, clothier. And I had like a $1,000 limit, those suckers. And I went in there when shit was falling apart. And I just spent the whole thing on suits and sniffed them as I was going down anyway. So for a year, I wore suits on stage. You played the game? I tried in Colorado, and I ate a bag of dicks. And then I took the same game to New York City, 
and I didn't do much better. You feel like people could could see through it that it wasn't you? Yeah, I tried really fucking hard. And then one night, I was driving a limo, and I used to have a boxing. There was a boxing gym on like 48th and 8th up the corner from Port Authority. And I would pay the guy like 20 fucking bucks to park for an hour and a half. And I would go upstairs, shower, I had a little locker up there. I would hit the bag and do push-ups and sit-ups and jump rope. And I would hit the pads with another guy for 20 bucks. And, but I could always take showers in the city and go on a move. And one night I wore a t-shirt. I didn't have a clean white shirt. I put a t-shirt on and I put a leather jacket over and I went on stage and I just was going off about what was going on in my life. I tried that Judy Carter approach, talk about what's bothering you, what, what kills you, and I went up there with that approach and I destroyed that room. That was one of those points where I was starting to think about quitting. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like oh, I was, yeah, no, I mean, I've gotten... You're starting to think about quitting? Well, I got off... I've been, I've had offers from, like, big record label, you know, like, clean it up and we'll sign you, or clean it up and you can do this show, you can do that show, and I've just always been, like, then what, you know... The money's not that fucking important. You know, it's like... I'd much rather do it my way and not, you know, censor myself and, you know that means something to me to do it you know be myself and do it but um but you know don't get me wrong when I, when they offer like a big label offers me it, it hits me in the head like you know maybe just clean it up and try it see if you can get on the radio live you know make that billy ray cyrus money or whatever it is but i just can't go i just can't go through with it um it's the sacrifices you make to be yourself because you know and i know we're a little wiser, we're a little older. You start to learn that you sell your soul a little bit. And it, it sounds great at first, but midway into what you get into, you start losing. And that 10 years later, you're, you're, yeah, not, you're you totally different. You're a different person, yeah. I took a chance. I, I knew right away. By the time I got back to Colorado in 94, I was three years into comedy. I knew what I wanted to do. Fuck the suits. Yeah, suits were gone. Back to who I am. You can't put on. Well, that's where all the great, you know, performers come from. It's just like yeah, you, fuck all this shit. I mean, didn't, didn't yeah, Richard Pryor do that kind of same thing? Yeah, he wore suits though. Towards the end, I, you just, in my world, it was always you can't put a silk hat on a pig. I just always when I heard that expression, I'm like Jesus Christ. And I knew that expression when I was like 15. Then they said it in Goodfellas 10 years later or something. But you can't put a silk hat on a pig, and I always knew that. For starters, one thing it did for me when I was when I went to back to New York in '93 and I was an open micer, I was walking one day and who do I see walking but Jay Leno? And I go, "Hey Jay, how you doing, man? I'm a I'm a starting comic. Can you help me out?" And he goes, "Just get on stage, brother." And I go, "You know what, man? Someday I'm gonna be on that show. I'm gonna be the funniest Cuban you ever saw." And he goes, "I know a lot of funny Cubans." And he walked away from me. And for like a year, I had this fantasy of going on Jay Leno and doing a six-minute clean set. And at one point, I was like, fuck Jay Leno. Jay Leno could suck my dick. Fuck Jay Leno. Letterman could suck my dick. Everybody could suck my dick. I could still get on HBO, and that's all that matters. In my world at that time, that's all that really matters is HBO. Once you hit HBO, they could all suck your dick. They all come running for you anyway. So, But that's the decisions you make early on. That a lot of people come up to you and go, maybe that's not, you know. Yeah, I mean, people could do that all, you know, you can get on fucking whatever it is now, Fallon, Cole, all that shit. Like, I can't. I can't. I'm saying, but they're telling me I, I have a chance because I sell records, but if I clean it up, I could go do that shit. But I'm just like. What about if they beep it? They, they said they could, they won't. I, I guess forget. the networks don't, won't, they don't, you know. On a 10 second delay, let me tell you something. Yes, they would. They used to in the old days. They used, we were just talking about that time. We were talking about, oh, you were here. You know, Dice's career really catapulted when he got banned from Santa Ana Line. Yeah, they put that delay on it. Yeah. And he got banned from MTV. Something about, uh, not catastrophe, because it's not a catastrophe. What's the word I'm looking for, Wheeler? Controversy. Something about controversy sells tickets. When it comes from the heart and it's real. Yeah, because I'm not trying to be controversial. It's just, no, no, no. Neither am I. I I'm going to go up there and say what I want to say. And if you don't want to hire me, that's okay. And I made that decision up 
in 2001. Well, it's a big decision it's to make. It's a big decision. You it's go, just like, I'm going to go down. I'm going to... If you, my thing is what you probably yours is too is like if I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail being myself. I did. I signed with this big time manager in like '97, and he was good. You ever have a manager that's better than you? Uh, he was better than me. Like he was getting me gigs that I wasn't good enough for. I wasn't. He was getting me into rooms, Jack. He was. He was getting me into movies like. What Men in Black. He got me into Men in Black. Like he had me into it. Every huge director. If I call him up and go, Jeff, there's a movie that's coming out. He go, he look at it, he go, I'll call you back. He called me back. He goes, Listen, I just pitched you to the director and he's got a producer. They want to see tape. I told him yeah, a little bit of a short film and stand up. Let's send them that. And then one time he took a video of me in Miami. He was there on the way on a cruise. And it was the dirtiest set I had ever done. Hilarious type shit when you're starting out. You know, like on Rogan the other day, were you talking about the... Like, I mean, that's the shit no. I love. I'm just talking about the, the guy with the ice in his mouth. That's all I'm thinking about. Oh, the fag, the, the, the gay guy with the ice <laughs> Who blows you with ice in his mouth. Yeah, the guy that sucks his dick with ice. Uh, <laughs> I love that shit. You know, it's... Uh, it's really fucked up when you when you make that decision. That you're gonna work fucking dirty. Like that said, I'm done with. Well, I don't think. I mean, I don't think. And tell me if I'm wrong. I don't think you made a decision to work dirty. You just made a decision to not censor yourself. Are there other country artists that are banned from places? Are you the only kind? Like, I think I'm the only one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of carved out my own lane at this point, which I kind of dig. And um, and for uh, people who haven't heard, I I actually was having lunch with someone yesterday who works in uh, the music industry and he he said he he'll just li- he loves listening to it because it's really good music like it's legit it it's like music. legitimately it's legit. well that's the thing is I, I that was my goal i said i at the time i had a kind of a bigger manager i said he goes what do you want to do i go i want to go in and i want to make the greatest country album of all time and make it completely unplayable that was my goal <laughs> well he's like why the fuck is that? i was like i don't know i just like fuck you know just see if i can do it so it was, it was, I mean, I literally just made it for myself. You know, I was just like, I want to see how good I can be and how much I can fuck myself over in the industry, you know, and see if people will still come and listen, you know. And it worked, you know. Uh, so far, it's been working. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, a good song is a good fucking song. I mean, we were just watching Skinner. I mean, that, that shit is so good. It'll cut through with anything. It doesn't matter. They were saying shit or fuck, no matter what. Does it get a fucking matter? They wouldn't even understand watching that people out here. Yeah. When I used to send that to agents, they said, this will brighten your day. They would go, what the fuck is that? That's <laughs> Leonard Skinner, brother. That's the music I grew up to. You know what, what you want to know? Fuck? You want to know why I'm fucked up? Because I listened to that shit with a hit of acid in me. That'll send you to fucking Jupiter. When you hear sound that special and that other one, the fucking walking up on me like a cat and... All that creepy shit. You take a hit of acid, walk. Tuesday's and, uh, gone. Listen, man, when you fucking tripping, and uh, come on, what's the song he wrote for his brother? Two good. He he's written two songs that the opening lines have have been brilliant. What's the opening lines to Saturday Night Special? I can't think about. It. I can't think of it right now. Look dun, it up. Dun, dun. Something about a fucking cat. And then look up the lyrics to uh, Two Feet They Come and Creeping. Like a black cat do. Right. All right, that's the opening lyric, okay? Listen to the opening lyric of That Smell. Whiskey bottom, brand new car, oak tree in my way. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? Are you Hemingway? Can't do that shit. No. Listen to the, read the first two lines of fucking uh, that smell. Yeah. Whiskey bottles and brand new cars. Oak tree, you're in my way. The next one. There's too much coke and too much smoke. Look what's going on and look what's going on inside you. The next one. <laughs> Lee reads Skinner. I, I, Ooh, that smell. There you go. Yeah, you Da-da. Can you smell that smell? Da-da. 
Ooh, that smell. Da da. The smell that's around you. What's the fir- what's the first track? Are on the you first? fucking kidding me? You know what that does to you when you're tripping or you're coked up? Because now you start smelling your shirt. <laughs> you're like, well, there is something surrounding me. I got, I got a black demon surrounding me. You know what I'm saying? I can't stop snoring and eating pussy and ordering takeout pizza. This is terrible. I haven't left the room in four days. And don't want to. Uh, what's the first track on the first album? That one always gets me too. Um. The one that freaked me out when I heard was uh, the first Real Leonard song album I bought was at the uh, Raceway where I used to get the Converse sneakers out of the dumpster from the fucking whatever, and it was Give Me Back My Bullets. Oh, that's a killer song. When I took that album home, it blew my mind. And then I bought, because of the cover, there was another country band that was not on Leonard Skinner's heels. I'll argue to the death. Somebody sent me an email one day that I was wrong. There was two other bands that were on that were on Leonard Skinner's radar, but they were not Leonard Skinner. No, I mean none of that shit was and close. There was another three of them. So if Leonard Skinner would have crossed once they once they would have switched Ted Nugent and Leonard Skinner, it was off and running after that. Yeah, that I mean meant that all happened. those bands. There was eight bands. There was five that was solid that were touring already, and three little ones that were going to cross over with them. And there went away the cars, the B-52s. There went away all that music, like Ozzy Osbourne. God knows what would have happened with Ozzy's first album. Leonard Skinner was about to take over. Yeah, those all those all world. those record dudes in New York would have been probably flying out to Florida, Georgia, looking for the next Skinner and shit instead of, you know. And they did. They tried this up. My my friend's band. I ain't the one. I, I, grew, that song. I grew up with a fucking dude. Jesus Christ, he was very good to me growing up. In fact, I spoke to him a couple times. His son's in a band. They're from Jersey. And these guys did like uh, the other guy. They did like the, 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 not the worst guy, but the guy on the lower scale on NBC. Comes on at one. Oh, Carson Daly. Carson Daly. I just Carson, did that show. Yeah, Carson Daly. Was <laughs> uh, hey, ask me. Ask me what Carson. Ask me what Carson Daly's like. What's he like? Don't know. Didn't meet him. Hilarious. Yeah. But uh, he was on one of those shows, a band or something like that. But I watched them, and they had a little southern flavor to them. I always liked that southern. Like, yeah, you know, there's a good a good southern rock band right now. This band called Blackberry Smoke. You heard? Yeah, yeah, I check heard them out. Yeah, 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 they're Black- good. They're good. That like that, that, that fucking solo that fucking Dickie Betts does, where I said to you, put that solo on. That solo destroys me. How he took his fucking neighborhood into those first couple chords. He just brought it. You could smell the barbecue. He took you there. Oh yeah, I got that's my, the I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out when I get that shit. Right. All those concerts live. From the 70s, a lot of them you're going to flip off after the third song. These Almond Brothers full concert, you got an hour to kill. Download it. Next time you take a fucking plane, put it on with you. Because those guys on. lived, lived all. The, it was all about playing live back then. You know, nowadays, I mean, is there any new band that you give a shit about seeing live? No. I would, but not for $657, brother. Exactly, yeah. I thought it over. And I got to make a pass on it. You know, I got a family. I got mounts to feed. And I can buy the CD and jump up and down. Me and Lee could do a hit of ass and lock ourselves in here, turn off the lights, and get extra speakers <laughs> and take this to the next. Look how he looks at me. He's like, yeah. please don't do that to me. When I put on fucking Black Sabbath and turn the lights down, he goes fucking who did you, did you Did you see any of the Sabbath reunion shows? No, I did not. I saw, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't a... Uh... I mean, you know, they're a little old. I saw the YouTube from this last video. Now, let's take everything into consideration. These guys are, were probably on their fucking 18th tour. They were all in their 60s and 70s. They're not even 40 and 50 like you and me, brother. They're 60 and 70. They performed every other night, twice a week. Watch Tony Iommi's guitar on those YouTube things. Oh, he still got it, yeah. He's a fucking savage, and Bill Ward's a fucking savage. And Ozzy, I love. I still don't know the mystery whether he's singing, whether he's got a background. Well, someone told me that he there's yeah, a guy back, backstage singing for him, but yeah. I told you when I, I said when I saw him, I said 
if he's got someone backstage it's singing impossible. for him, I go, if he's got someone backstage singing for him, the guy took the night off because he didn't hit one note on key. He's 70 something years old. Yeah, I mean, I didn't bother me. You can't really drink and destroy your throat. You can't smoke. You know, they have like a, something that they could shoot. Like I said, I know this dude, and he knew testosterone. He's a testosterone doctor, one of those age guys. And I asked him once, who comes here, actors? He goes, my biggest market is musicians. Really? All these guys on tour. That's what they do to perform. A little shot two times a week. Of what? Testosterone? Yeah. A little clean. What does that do? It makes you recover fast. Okay. Okay. Remember you know, that? do you ever see, you know, Ivory show, Ozzy pours the bucket of water over him? Yeah. You know why he does that? What? You found out? I hope I'm not telling these stories out of school, but this is what I was. Uh, he's in cotton. He pisses his pants. So um, they couldn't figure out what to do. They tried the diaper and all that shit. You know, Ozzy Osbourne can't go on stage in a fucking diaper. And they're just and his manager's just like, you know what? Just pour water over your head. You'll be soaking wet. No one can see a piss stain anyway. That's why he does that every show. That's crazy. Because he's pissing himself. You know, it's just th those tours. In the seventies and eighties and sixties. Well, those guys. You mean like, they, they lived thirty years every week? Like my brother Bob Lolingas sent me a book about Jimmy Page, the, the Three Lies of Jimmy Page. I've been reading it for two months. I'm I haven't even put a dent in it. But right now, was the last time I read it, which is last weekend, this last weekend, it was about like one of their tours in seventy one or something, and it was just pure. Oh yeah, they should. It's like they should have been in cages. Yes. They were fucking animals. They were animals. Like, they just, uh, it's when you're reading it, you, you're shaking your head. Because like, how they live, how, bo like, the question is, how do you, how Bonham even live that long? When you read those bon books. Bonham, Keith Moon, Eric Clapton. First of all, Clapton, those guys were hooked on fucking heroin deep. Page, I remember fucking Dean Delray showed us one time, uh, Nebworth again. 79, you ever see that one? No, who's that? Led Zeppelin doing Achilles last night. After the show, we'll put it on for you. Okay. Jimmy Page is being held up by the bones in his fucking shoulders. He's down to 80 pounds, brother. The heroin had him fucking deep. He was on heroin? Oh, now when he went back to Alex to Crowley's cave. I was going to say, yeah, didn't he? And he, sat in there for three fucking he, years. He, he lived in Raping a, that woman and fucking, you know. He was living in Alistair Crowley's yeah, place, living was, with a little girl. Yeah. yeah, he was up there fucking doing evil things. Hey, I ain't mad at him. It's his business. Yeah. People lived how they lived in those days. Makes the, the stones, stars look pretty tame. The stones were animals on tour. But I read an interesting story from Keith Richards' book about the chick the blind chick who used to come to all the shows and Keith Richards found out she was blind so he'd pay the the guys that carried the stage hands to take her from spot to spot and take good care of her. When he got busted for heroin, the little blind girl found out and she hitchhiked to Canada and found out who the judge was, knocked on his door and explained to him who Keith Richards really was, the type of person he was, that he looked after her on the road. When she was just a runaway and she wanted to follow the band. He didn't, never tried to fuck her, made sure nobody fucked her and fucked with her. And the judge took the case into consider. You know, he took the... Really? Thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, I thought that was life. They're that savages. They, listen, we all know what we bump into, what I bumped into over the years. I know the people I bump into now are a lot better than the people I was bumping into 15 years ago on the road. I mean, there was nights... I couldn't get a hold of my deal in a foreign town, and I got a monkey on my back. It's four in the morning. I got a chick on the couch who I just got ready to fucking take off her panties, and we realized we're down to a gram of blow, and this ain't gonna... I gotta stick some in her asshole and suck it out. You know, I gotta do evil things to, at six in the morning. Daylight's coming. And you gotta do some evil things in the middle of the night, bro. Knock on doors. It's horrible. So you were pretty... You were, you were pretty... At your worst, it was pretty bad. Yeah, I was going till eight in the morning when I was on the road. What do you think? How, sorry if I'm at being too personal, but like, what was the worst? Do you you think? Just like, could you? Was it? So how was it? How hard was it to quit? It was a decision. Yeah. It was a decision based on a promise, based on who I become. But it took me about a year to really quit. But at that time, I really like the road. Oh my God! Like I was going nuts. So now do you just kind of do weekends and stuff? 
Yeah, but I would still do weekends back then. But I would plan them. Like, let's say I had to work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'd fly down there Tuesday night at 5. I'd get to your town. And I really was had, I had enough plans. I had enough cash for two packs of cigarettes, the Coke I was going to buy. And if I did a show that night, I'd get a draw. So I could show up at your town flat broke that night for dinner and just ask them. Who, who was booking you back then? Just I was sit. booking myself. Yeah. But I was getting fucked. Like, I remember going to Houston, being there for two weeks and snorting every night except one. Huh. Like, every night except one. Like, snorting until some nights still two. Some nights I'd go home and one package was pretty good. But one night, if the Coke was good, forget about it. I'd stay up till 8 in the morning, talking shit, drawing pictures, whacking off, smoking <laughs> cigarettes, drinking a little bit of alcohol, acting like a fucking asshole. At the end, what's so fun about that? I mean, it doesn't sound funny. No, though. that was the last three years of it. Every once in a while, if I picked up a freak that I trusted or somebody who was cool with me, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you were really, really cool with me, and I knew me and Wheeler were going to lock ourselves in for six hours in here and talk some shit and maybe get two fucking broads to come over and fucking stick fucking, put some Wheeler Walker music on and <laughs> eat their assholes right next to each other. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the good old days, man. Let's put on some Tony Bennett, brother. It's Monday. The Fuck. If you think my fingers are greasy till I went to see that chocolate tomorrow night and shit. Ah, uh, my little brotherly. How, how funny is that fucking? And you know what? It's not like I cut it out there and put it out there. I know yes, that Lee, Lee's ashamed. You know he feels guilty, but Lee, there's nothing to be guilty about. We saw it. That's you know, not Lee, a great Lee, look for anybody. Oh, I love yeah, it. Yeah, but what, Lee? Nobody's going to say nothing. You're a, everybody, what are you talking you, about? Lee, this is a director right now who's looking for a chubby little Jew to be an erotic David fucking whatever. I just got, I just gave you an offer to do that on stage for 200 bucks. That's how fucking funny you are. And 10 drinking. You have no idea how funny you I didn't do anything. Just, I was just high. You were high as fuck, but you were falling apart, and you were keeping it together, and that's the soldier in you. Most people would have thrown the headphones down Push the fucking, you would have picked up uh, whatever, uh, Rianne, whatever his name is, you, Rabazio, my little brother, you would have picked him up, thrown him out the door head first, he would have banged this off the American flag, <laughs> and then you would have just kicked Dean Delray right against the Victrola over here, the little edge of that would have stabbed him in the back and killed him. You would come to me, and then you look at me. You know I'm your brother, so you jump over the table on the way out. You'd step on that poor kid, kick him in the mouth, and you'd run out of here and run down the street and call 911 and go over to the fire department. And they'd probably put you in a wetsuit, one of those suits that they wrap you around. And they'd take you to the psychiatric thing because they'd find blood on your shoe. Meanwhile, I got to take this other kid to a fucking hospital. And I got to bury Dean Delroy. I got to go get some lime and get a shovel <laughs> and drop Dean Delroy off off the 170 with a Rolling Stone poster in his hand and a Hollywood Bowl ticket and blame it on the fucking Hollywood Bowl. You know what I'm saying? And then light my car on fire and report it fucking stolen after it's charcoal to death off the fucking 101 North somewhere. That would be my evening. So please do me no favors. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I mean, I see that shit, and I, I fucking, I, I love it, but not in like an embarrassing way. I'm just like, that's a champ. Most people would have cracked under pressure. Yeah, I wouldn't. Have, but, I, I wouldn't just be, looking at that door in that condition, <laughs> and knowing that that door is closed, and there's three people in front of you to get out, and you're not gonna get out in time. Like you could have a nervous breakdown. Oh, yeah. Like I've been in situ. The reason why I fly. 
and I had two of those Dr. fucking Xanaxes, and they're in that bag, Scott's tape. They don't move. I never touch them. It was because there was a couple times I went on planes, and I got, let's just say I got a little bit too fucking high on edibles, and I thought about opening up that fucking window and jumping out, and I'll tell you, it's not a good Oh, no, I don't fly without feeling. I don't fly without Xanax with me. Listen to me, bro. Sunday, I had one of those L.A. adventures again. Lee, you ready? Again. Again. This could only happen to your Uncle Joey. I get the fucking wherever I was last week, which I had a great time. Omaha. Omaha, Nebraska. And I get to the fucking Delta Terminal early. I eat breakfast like a gentleman. And I'm right there at Terminal C4. And I'm sitting there against the wall, minding my own business, ready to get in the fucking line to board the plane. And a black, nice, fucking cool dude comes up to me. He goes, do I know you from somewhere? And I go, nah, I don't think so. He goes, yeah, I do. I know you from some movies and shit. You know, and I said, yeah. And he goes, my name is whatever. He was a gentleman. And we start talking and stuff. And he goes, well, you live in L.A.? You look like a New York type of guy. I go, nah, I live in L.A. I go, he goes, you like it? I go, nah, I'm having my issues, you know. I think I've been there for too long. I'm ready to move on, you know. He goes, what don't you like about it? And I go, well, for starters, look around the fucking terminal. Look at terminal one, look at terminal fucking two. What do you see? I go, look over there. You see real people. Look at this terminal. Count how many, if all all these people had hooded cap, what do you call those, those skull caps? Yeah. Everybody had a skull cap on because the airport's a fucking miserable freezing place. <laughs> There was a guy with pink shoes sitting in the front in the row waiting to get on. Everybody had a weird hairdo. There's a chick with a t-shirt, barely covering her tits, belly button out, tight pants, shoes. There's the chick with the purse with the little chihuahua in it. Oh, it's it's it, it, it's endless. It's endless the parade of jerk offs. <laughs> Wherever airport you go to and you get on the flight to LA, it's endless. And I mentioned this to the guy. And I mentioned this to the guy, I go, why, why, how many service dogs we got? He goes, oh, we just got that girl with the dog in her basket in her fucking purse. I go, he goes, you're right. There's always service dogs. There'll be people with three service dogs. One person, three service dogs and an assistant. That's fucking, yeah. I mean, I, I fucking hate it. But. I get on the plane. You know me, guys. I'm always 1C. That's just the way it is. When I get on a plane, I don't fuck around. I want one C. If I don't have it, we buy it. We figure how to get one C or one fucking B, and then we move backwards one by one. And then once I get to the airport, we try to deal with it. But I got one C going there and coming back. I sit. I put my shit on top. I take my earphones off. I take my Walkman. I put my wallet in the bag because I don't need it. And I put my little cell phone with me with my glasses. I got my little nicotine gum. I ain't bothering nobody. Some fucking Harvey homo with his assistant comes up to me with his grease head back. <laughs> and he goes, you're in my fucking chair. That's how my day starts at fucking 5.25 in the morning on fucking Sunday. I haven't bothered anybody. I haven't even said boo to anybody except for this little black gentleman and the cab driver tried to give me an ear beating about his son in Iberia jumping up and down. Taking pictures of polar bears. What are you telling me for? It's 4.15 in the morning. <laughs> I'm barely up. I need 10 shots of coffee and somebody will lick my ass out and get me up. And you're bothering me about your kids hunting, taking pictures of fucking <laughs> polar bears up in Liberia. <laughs> 4 fucking 30 in the morning, you cocksucker. I love you, though. So I sit there and the guy's like, yeah, that's my chair. I go, no, nah, I'm 1C. He looks at me and goes, no, nah, I'm 1C. I go, listen. I'm 1C. I just looked at the ticket. I'm on this road. Pop. I, I go, I'm 1C. He looks at me and goes, well, I got to get to the bottom of this because that's my chair. That's where I always sit. Oh, my goodness. Like, that's where I always sit. So and he laughed and his assistant stayed there glaring at me like he was going to do something. Piece of shit. So I leveled my foot sideways so if he came to me, I could stop him <laughs> in his knees and get up and with one foot and just punch him in the fucking throat and end it right there for me. Give me 10 years in the fucking... <laughs> federal prison up in Lompoc and I'll, I'll ride horses and Leo come up once a week and we'll do the podcast live from the prison yard <laughs> a little something for reactivation into the fucking land you follow me is that what LA is for you now so what happened 
So he came back, and he goes, that's my ticket. I go, no, I'm 1C. And the guy goes, well, show him his ticket. And the guy was fucking 4C. And he goes, well, no, it doesn't matter. I want to sit there. I go, are you fucking serious? I go, go on the back, get in the dungeon. And him and his little fucking party. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened to us. It was a crazy flight. Even the fucking attendance. Was it past off. Sunday? This flight was crazy. Something else happened in the flight. There was, there was, the, was atten- the, dungeon. the two first class attendants were black. And there was a guy on there that would open up the top, pull his shit out, and shit would fall down, and he'd go back in his corner and sit. This happened about four or five times. And the lady said something to him. And he goes, What do you think I paid for first class for? You pick it up. That was like rudeness right there. And then, with 10 seconds, 10 minutes to go on the flight, the dude who I told him to get in the dungeon, his lover walks past me and goes in the bathroom. I'm watching fucking, I tried to watch Planet of the Apes again, the most racist thing I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I couldn't watch it. <laughs> I saw it in the movies, I had to walk out. It, it offended you? Yes, it did offend me. For the first time, I grew up on Planet of the Apes. That was, oh the, my that was my favorite movies of all time, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, when they unmasked themselves under the Lincoln Tunnel and the Holland Tunnel, one of the greatest scenes ever in fucking the media. But it changed my outlook when I saw this. Now it's real racist. When I was a kid, it was like mild racist. Some guy got high, <laughs> and he goes, let's unhunt black people. We can't do that. His assistant's like, we can't do that. Well, what can we substitute? Let's substitute apes or monkeys. That's what they did. I honestly believe that. You really think that? Yeah, I think that. And as I get older, now that I saw this one, they really went crazy. And I, you know, you know me, dog. I'm half racist. I, I'm not racist, but I say racist shit in my house. <laughs> <laughs> See, I like the new Planet of the Ace movies, but you're gonna ruin them for me. Man. I'm, a, you know, I'm old school. I grew up. You know, I come from Cuba. Cinema is big to me. A guy like me. I sit there, I watch all those when I came. I never forget friends telling me, you got to go see Beneath the Planet of the Apes. They were like 15. I was like, see what, see what it looks like, Beneath the Planet of the Apes. It's fucking old. Seriously, put on Beneath the Planet of the Apes peel skin scene. Watch this. This is going to fucking creep you out. This is the type of shit I went to. The skin, the face skin scene. Put it up on the computer, my brother, on the big screen there. It's for your Uncle Joey, will you? Yes. Sir. Why are you playing games with me? I'm not. I'm just going to YouTube. Jesus no. Christ. But you're, you're talking about the plane, the new ones. No, the old ones. You were watching the old ones. No, I was watching the fucking new ones. Now, one day I went to the movie theater, and I tried to watch the new one, and I was going for it for a while. And as I'm watching, I'm going, wait a second. They created this in the 70s. They created this in the 60s. This was Planet of the Apes, then Beneath the Planet of the Apes, then uh, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, then Revenge of the Planet of the Apes. When I was a kid, there was like four or five of them. They were American blockbusters, but they were interesting films. But Beneath the Planet of the Apes had a scene where I had to be six or seven guys. Uh, Okay, let me see fountain scene from beneath the planet of the apes let's see that scene did you put in no 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 It's called Planet of the Apes 1968. So, guys, when this move, uh, face peel. Let's see. Jesus. Right there. Let's try the first one. Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Try that one, man. What the fuck? That's the missile that's going to shoot, kill the world. And the apes have it. Somebody's got this fucking thing. I don't know if it's the Puerto Ricans. Who the fuck knows? It's a scary fucking scene. When you're a child, like I said, I was fucking five. And my friends talked me into going to see this. 
from the hundred uh, from 88th Street. And I went like an asshole. Were you scared of going to the zoos after that? Like, were you scared of actual apes? Nah, I went to the Bronx Zoo a couple of days after that. It's a three day excursion in those days, walking around the fucking Bronx Zoo. But no, it was uh, I don't know. I just turned it off and I watched the show I was watching. JJ. Well, I gotta. Go. I need a new show to watch. Should I try that one? No, because it's in Spanish. You don't watch Narcos yet? I watch. Yeah, I watch. Okay, I you watch. watch you Keep know, watching that. Netflix has some great shit. You gotta hunt it. That's the good thing about Netflix. If you got time, you'll find something. Yeah, they have a lot of old TV series. Like I recently watched Cheers and Frasier. Like when I go to the gym, that's what I do. Yeah, that's not, it's like comfort food. It's like makes me feel good. Yeah, I just want something on in the background. Yeah. Um, someone's telling me. What was someone talking about today? Is that Ozark they were talking about? That sound familiar? Oh yeah, I have heard about that. I haven't seen that one. That's though. the one about the money launderers. I've just heard the name Ozark. It's something about money laundering or something like that. I've been rewatching a uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm so I can catch up and watch the new Did series. Did you watch it once before? I uh, spot spot. Did you get to the part where he gets the hooker? I've seen that one. Is before, that one of the yeah. funniest things? When I first watched that one, now what happened Saturday night? Did you watch it? Yes. Yes, I did. Live? Yes. Was it offensive to you? Oh, no, oh, no I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about the UFC. No, I did not watch that. Did um, you see it at all? No. I heard about it. What was the, what was the thing? Something about Hitler or something. I think. Well, about the Holocaust. Well, with a pickup line, be it uh, Auschwitz. Hey, mm -hmm. how's it going? You know, shit like that. Which, like again, my wife and I were talking about this. I don't know, guys. I was raised under the thing, me da oye kaya. That means fucking boom, 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 right? But number two was sticks and stones don't break my bones. Yeah, exactly. And words will never help me. Whatever that hurt me. Call me this, call me that. I still say you're a big fat rat. Whatever you say sticks to you. What I'm rubber, you're glue. I'm rubber, you're glue. So that's what you were raised as. All of a sudden now, we've sensitized everything, bro. Yeah, it's a weird time to be doing Every what we're doing. Every day, fucking somebody's apologizing. What? Hey, I got a question. Why do you think that is? Because, you know, we got the you know the dirtiest president ever, so it should, you'd think it would open shit up more. No, 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 no. It's tightening. The liberalism is tightening. Bro, they took Columbus Day away because they killed people 3,000 years ago. What the fuck do we know? Yeah, I mean, what the fuck do we know? At this point, shouldn't we be able to say fucking shit on NBC? I don't understand. No, listen, man, that's they have big, but listen, their sponsorship money. That's all NBC's decision. It's going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's NBC's decision. FX is FX for a reason. Fox said, you know what? We don't want to show that shit. But what if we create a name on cable network that the rules are a little lighter and you can say pussy and cock and everything except. This word till ten o'clock at night. Did you hear Disney's gonna buy that? What? Or trying to buy that? What FX? Uh, they're they're like they're splitting up a bunch of the Fox products. I love FX. I love what they've done. I love the chances they take, and everybody gets to watch. And you make a decision, bitch. Yeah. And they got sponsors on there, so I don't want to fucking hear it. You know, Sons of Anarchy did tremendous numbers. That crime show, that late horror show, the spooky show. They oh had, yeah, American is Horror Story. Fucking brilliant. Every season is fucking brilliant. I like that better than anything I've watched the last couple of fucking years. I don't mind spooky shit. That's got action to it. I don't... Listen, I'm 50 fucking four. If you're going to jump out of the thing with a glove and a mask on, just give me my money back. <laughs> just give me my money back. It's 2017. I seen fucking the first fucking whatever... I liked that shit as a kid. I saw The Exorcist as a kid. I liked that shit. The Exorcist, to me, is the scariest movie you ever watch because it scares you when you go home. It'll affect you for the first two weeks. Put the light on if you hear a rat in your house. Rosemary's Baby, too. Yeah, like, Rosemary's oh Baby. All those type of movies, psychological. But they were damaging. smart. Yeah. Then there's the movies that make you yell in your seat. I don't like that. I don't like that either. That's high blood pressure shit. Yeah, that's that's just like easy to do. Just yeah. quiet and then loud. Yeah, I don't yeah like you know that. it's coming, but you still get scared. 
Yeah, no, the, the people next to you act like fucking momos. <laughs> but you're already too high. You might as well stay in there. What the fuck? I, I don't know. I, I like certain type of horror. Yeah. I like Alfred Hitchcock. I like fucking... Uh, Shining. The Shining, I enjoy. What's that fucking uh, other one? Uh, the Twilight Zone? Yeah, yeah. That could be fucking spooky as fuck because you have to turn I was a kid it was the last show on remember I grew up on Honeymooner Odd Couple Sanford and Son Twilight Zone 1230 Twilight Zone are you fucking yeah Twilight me? Zone was pretty ahead of its and time and then you huh? turn Twilight Zone is still they do Twilight Zone marathons next time Thanksgiving comes around and sci-fi does or whatever. I want you to make sure you tape the one with Burgess Meredith when he wears glasses and the end of the world happens. I want you to tape the one with Sebastian Cabot where he plays the devil in a white suit. It's fucking brilliant. The writing will take you from one dimension to another. And there's a couple, there's like five more that you can't think of off the top of your head that when you walk, because I've seen all of them. As a kid, I watched it. That was the only show that, when I was a kid, they had already seasons of it already. And they were kind of weird. They were kind of black, and, even more black and white than these ones, so you didn't want to watch them. I even went back and watched them. And I've always enjoyed them. There's some that I don't want to see again. Yeah, I'll watch those marathons. Man. And there's just, some that but it's you just, want to I, I love again. that. It's like, I love TV that's like, or movies, whatever, that's smarter than me, that's a step ahead of me, you know? Nowadays, I can just guess what's happening. I know what's happening that next scene, no matter what. Like know? I said, this thing that I got turned on to... You want me to tell you why I don't like Spanish TV? Because it reminds me of being a child and watching telenovelas. And I got to tell you something, this production company, whoever they are, in my eyes, they've hit it out of the park because they're three for three. They're three for three. They're narcos this show... And Celia, about a Cuban, oh, about Celia Cruz, the Cuban chick. Another 88 fucking episodes. Huh. I'll watch that. I think they got it down to a science. It's a mix of film and telenovela put together. They got interesting characters. They got a fucking character named Urega. Okay, this is, this is about a prison. This is about a hitman that killed 250 people and responsible for 3,000 people. He pulled the trigger in one way or the other. But before he turns himself in, while they're hunting Pablo, he cuts a deal for seven years. And they put him in the capital prison. And it's run by tra drug traffickers. There's a, they're in one cell, paramilitary, and then the guerrillas, the commies, and all this shit. So it takes you deep. He goes in there, and he's one step ahead of everybody. He's like a fucking Spanish, the guy from the Sons of Anarchy. Whatever he does, he's always got coverage. He tells, he takes these tales that he does. Like one thing he did was he started writing. He found the publisher offered him money, and he started writing. This is a true fucking story, bro. He started writing, and he got the publisher to come in, give him an offer, and to bring the machines into the prison so his co-workers in the prison could have work and they could earn money as a re whatever into society program what they didn't know was that this guy wrote this book but he was putting acid in the paperwork in the books and shipping them out and they would go to like Barnes and Noble you would walk in there let me get all the books for fucking what's his name and you would take them back to a lab and they cut the sheets out he took cocaine. He took cocaine out of Colombia and replaced it with acid, and he did it all from this prison. It was crazy. Where did he get the? He got a chemist in there, and they got everything smuggled in. It's Colombia. If you have money, you live like a doctor. And they were printing the books in there. That's why, yeah. That's why they they fought extradition, because down there, with a million dollars, <laughs> you go to jail, but it's like being home. You got a bed. You got a big screen TV. And guess what? If you got that type of money, you got 21-year-old freaks coming in every night. You in got jail? coke in there? Oh, yeah. They had bitches in there every night. You pay the guards off. They come in at midnight. Hotter than fuck. 
But you got to have a million dollars to do that type. Those narco traficantes had 15 billion American dollars in the bank when they went to prison. Can you imagine having 15 billion dollars in the bank from selling coke? How would you live in prison? Not in the United States. Not anymore. You might find a couple fucking crooked guys that'll let you do something. But I doubt it's going to be like high level like you don't live in Colombia. Look how Pablo Escobar built the inside of that place and taught Colombia into fucking putting himself in there. Did you ever stop and think about that? I lived through that. I remember reading about that and going, is it me or is this fucking just crazy? That he was just allowed to build his own prison? Yeah, and then that you knew he was building soccer fields in there and... Who's who's the guy who tunneled who tunneled out? El Chapo. El Chapo. Yeah. He's in New York, in Manhattan. To what? In prison. He's about to go on trial. So they have him in New York. Yeah, because he escaped Mexico. They can't. They can't trust Mexico. Let me give some shout outs real quick to my little brother Andrew McCartan, my man Young Health Time, Ookie Spooky, my girl, Passenger Shaming, Ghetto Vaquero. Tyvon Kanip, Jeffrey Collins as usual, Nikki Shades, and regular car reviews. Don't forget, I think the link is up next Tuesday. I'm doing the showcase. You motherfuckers torture them. Thank you. You guys torture them. Netflix, thank you. I'm getting a Netflix fucking showcase next Tuesday, 8 p.m., Comedy Store. And then the following Wednesday, Irvine Improv, the night before Thanksgiving. Lee's making an appearance. He loves the hamburgers down there. You know how we do it. Those have been the best rides of our lives. The first ride I took down there with Lee, I was 10 minutes away from pulling over and telling Lee to fucking take over the wheel, make a U-turn, and go home. We got so high by mistake one time, the first time. (laughs) It was not by mistake. It was on purpose. No, no, no. I don't do nothing on purpose, okay? Everything is well planned out, but sometimes plans backfire. I've talked about it a thousand times. Sometimes the edible turns on you. Which, which time was this? I don't even remember. Listen, I got video of it. Let me explain something to you. Edibles turn on you from time to time. You met them more from bad feeling. You've been thinking about something. Maybe you watched Narcos too many episodes. And next thing you know, you eat an edible and it turns on you. And it backfires on you. Your body DNA is off. Maybe a lot of cheese that day. Maybe you got no testosterone in your system. And next thing you know, you sit on the couch thinking about fucking shooting yourself. But you want to watch fucking your friend on Jimmy Kimmel. And that's what's keeping you alive. I mean, you get so fucking high sometimes. But sometimes you control it. Here on the church, we take chances. Why? Because that's how you got to roll. What if you bump into somebody and they give you something on the street, on the up and up, and they ain't legit? Guess what happens? We're prepared. If you dose me with a pot cookie... Nothing's gonna happen. I'm an Annie Molly of Annie Molly. <laughs> the fuck are we talking about here? You know what I'm I don't know, but I love it. It's just like no, we always fucking go deeply. That's say, why. Yeah? That's, that's why I love it here. It's like you, it's, it's, it's its own dimension, you know. No, this is listen from the beginning, from day one. <laughs> I wanted people to hear something, learn something, and take something home with them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really want them to have that feeling of there's no pretentiousness here. This is who I am. This ain't no fucking guy. I'm not doing this for my health. I really enjoy doing this and talking to people who are young, who are fucking having problems. You know, last week somebody posted on the wall that they were 23, and, you know, and it takes me back. Like, how fucking fucked up was I at 23? How scared was I? I was just scared. What, what was this guy saying? And he was 23 and he was going through a hard time. I really, it really fucked with me because I remember everybody thinks it just happens. You know, in this life, I love how people's attitude is that this just happens. No, this, this, this happens because of discipline. And even though we want to do something, we don't do it. That's when you really grow as a musician, as a comedian. That's a different. Yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole thing that with, with me was. I don't think I would have gotten this if uh, if it wasn't for the two thousand people who told me I can't do it. That was the whole point. I got to prove to you that you know what I don't. I don't need the fucking radio. I don't need fucking Jimmy Fallon. I don't need any of that fucking shit. I'll sell. I'll sell tickets anyway. I'll figure. You know, we'll figure it out. Um, you like I said, the good thing about you is, I go watch you. 
I know I'm gonna good. I'm gonna watch good fucking musicians, great composed music. The lyrics about this fat chick sucking your pipe, that's the cherry on the motherfucking <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sunday. You know what I'm saying? It's just like... But if you really like country music, then you have no excuses here. You just can't... Oh, you can't take the words? Come on, how old are Well, that's my thing, too. It's just like... It, <coughs> what I was trying to do is... I mean, I mean, I was trying to do a million things, but one of them is, is, you know... Country music used to be fun. That was the whole point. Like, let's take this traditional country music with great musicians and sing about dick sucking and, you know. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't think I'm, I hope you don't think I'm blind, even though I went to see Kenny Rogers in 83 and I went to see somebody else in the country realm, not Chris Christopherson. I think I went to see Willie Nelson with them, with my buddy uh, Jimmy V. Yeah, Willie Nelson still got it. Still got but it. I also saw something. I saw the corporation come into country music. Oh, yeah, no. I saw them take the... They took a uh, a rock uh, mode. They turned it into like when they were hot on the five kids singing and dancing together. New Kids on the Block. New Kids shit, on yeah. the Block and the other ones and the other ones. Well, that's the war I've got, it you all know. Started all those guys are, yes. are fucking pissed at me because it's like, this is not... It's, 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 it's corporate pop country. It's corporate pop country. It's not country music. I and mean, it's well fucking produced. Yeah, but it sounds it's like well it's on produced. the block. You know, I know who really has the country in their heart and I who, who's faking the fun. And you, you know yeah, people, you know. people see through it. It takes yeah, it takes, it takes, no, it it takes take 10, sec, tech, 10 seconds to listen to it and realize what the dog shit is, you know? But it's really weird how it's become so country music is just the country music awards is you know, it's fucking unbelievable. You sit there and go, what the fuck is this shit? Want to hear something crazy? Um, so the Country Music Awards is the big award show, and I have a duet on this on the new record, Old Wheeler, called uh, Fucking Around. A friend of mine is on the CMA board, and he um, he wrote the song Fucking Around With Me, and uh, he was at a CMA meeting, and they go, the last ballot before the nominees, the head of the Country Music Awards goes, we got a problem here. And he go, and there everyone was like, "Was there's, there's a song by this, some guy named Will Walker Jr. called Fucking Around. It's still on the ballot, and the final ballot's tomorrow. Like, what do we do? I mean, does anybody know what the fuck this is? And my friend's like, yeah, I, I co-wrote the song. I wrote it with, with Wheeler. And he goes, and they're like, um, you know, what do we do? I mean, what do we do if it, if it gets a nomination? And they had to decide at the meeting that it, you know, we'll put the asterisks in it or whatever. So I was this close to it. I mean, I, I don't want it. Because I don't want to have to go to that bullshit, but... How cool would it be? You gotta go. No, it would have been cool. If you win it for doing what the fuck you believe in, yeah, you gotta it show. It would have been a nice fuck. You gotta show a tuxedo up and tell them all to suck But yeah, I was, I was this close to a vocal event of the year was the category. Um, Good for you, man. Which, you know, it doesn't really count because no one knows about it. That's why I'd say it on the church. That but. feels good that the fans had your fucking back on this. Well, it, it, felt, it was weird because it's not fans. It was the... It's the industry voting on it. How crazy is it? I, I don't know how it got that far. Because the music is fucking tremendous. I think people... If you really like that music and you don't mind some lyrics, like I said, what the fuck is wrong with you? You go out to eat ass and eat pussy. Nobody goes out to leave the gig and go to church. Nobody. Not one person. <laughs> Everybody takes one of those hot, chunky little country blondes. She's been at a fucking and, and all those station. And all those, all those clean country guys are just doing blow and fucking girls, you know? And they're doing steroids now. And they're, they're all looking and, and good, and man. And Those guys are yeah, fucking oh, yoked. These guys need to... I always say they need to stop going to the gym and take some guitar lessons, you know? Or sing, take some singing lessons. But, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just a bunch of bullshit, and I'm sick of it. And I'm, it's, it's like a nice big fuck you to all of them, that, you know? But it's working. See, that's the... If you were sitting here, like, not touring and not selling tickets and not having the success you're having... Then I go, listen, you, you took a chance, Columbus did. Go home, regroup, get those fucking lyrics spinning. Well, that's what I thought I was supposed Take to be. Take those X-rated fucking words out now. Go back with this great music you have. And listen, let me tell you what the beauty about this is. How many? What, what number is this? This is album number two, yeah. correct? You're going to do two more albums. At least, probably, yeah. And then you're going to do a real album with no dirty lyrics. You think so? Oh yeah, you're gonna get do West because you're brilliant. You're gonna go. You're gonna write songs, and in your head, I want you to picture who you want to write these songs with. And I guarantee, if you write ten good songs like you've been writing, you're gonna get two of those hot country chicks to sing a duet with you. You got a great voice. The music is solid, 
and fuck with them. You already won the war, now you really want to come on their face. <laughs> Let me show you what the who the fuck I'm rolling with. Yeah. And do a 10 city tour and call it the Suck My Dick Tour. And now you do With the a song on the radio, the Suck My Dick Tour, yeah. That's it. Now yeah. you switch with them. This is longevity, this is Madonna type shit. What would Madonna do? Why did Madonna last 20 years? Because she was fucking around? She was fucking with your head, guy. Look at her history. Next time you got a, next time you have a problem with making money, find something about Madonna. And yeah, she sucked a little dick. You see her complain about Harvey Weinstein? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Madonna blew Harvey Weinstein 15 times. Did you ever see her complain? She joined your yoga. She fucking twisted until the mint bad minerals came out of those those little fucking uh, Jew little sperm little uh, pedophile Jews. These are the little dungeons. <laughs> <laughs> the little dungeon Jews, that's what I call them. <laughs> it got worse every time you said it. The dungeon, who are the dungeon Jews? <laughs> fucking, uh, what's his name? Weinstein? Weinstein. Yeah. He's one of those fucking dungeon Jews. I guess, I guess maybe pedophile is worse than dungeon <laughs> No, he's one of those dungeon Jews. Everybody's fucking mad. I'm looking, fucking, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? What's the hell? What? what does that mean? <laughs> Describe a dungeon Jew. <laughs> it's at least not one, is it? I, I guarantee. Might be, I think I might be. Bro, let me tell you something. They haven't even discovered oh. half of what Weinstein has. Oh, can you imagine? Oh my God! I read an article today that he had he hired um, like p- private investigators. <laughs> From like a team. I'm still laughing about the dungeon Jew. <laughs> That's oh, one of those. He keeps little girls in the basement at some little dungeon Jew in Israel, and he keep he keeps like a little feeder, like they do for your cat when you leave for a year. It's like a little feeder with Cheerios, hand sanitizer, and he flies into Israel. He climbs into the hole. He fucks the shit out of him in the dungeon. He throws some Jewish like holy of the water. Kind of. Yeah, and then he flies back to America. He's got to have shit in safes that would fucking destroy people because he's creepy. So if he did it for this long, that means he got confidence and he taped a few of them. No. Oh, you have to think like him right now. I think he would have already come out with it. Don't unless you, you don't. Unless you're that fucking dumb. He's listen. He's an old dungeon Jew. Number one, he's got an ace in the hole. He's going to come out of there with something. There's some place, there's an apartment where he took girls. He rented hotels, okay? But he couldn't have been that stupid because up to get 24 Seasons Hotel, there's cameras. So he couldn't be that fucking stupid. So after a while, when they got hip and through the investigations, I guarantee he's got about five or six. He's got some Pablo Escobar pads all over Beverly Hills, Palm Springs, San Diego. Maybe Santa Barbara, where he would drive, make, make the girls go up there and drive to get away. You got to hide, leader, bang these girls. You got to get away from the paparazzi. And he ain't stupid. He was doing it for that long, right? Women said he molested them 20 years ago, correct? Yeah, well, so, someone's so, going to take him to trial now, right? So somebody's going to take him to trial, and, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. He's got three investigations, guys. He's gonna. They, if, if, if any, if, if anything, if, if they connect all this, he's gonna die in jail because he's gonna get forty years. He's gonna get ten. He's gonna get fifteen years concurrent from three different fucking states. They're gonna fucking take him to. They're gonna find him in California, or, or find him in New York. Then what? What is he gonna do to England? I know he's uh, broke. I know he's cleaned up. But again, he's a dungeon Jew. He's got three mil in fucking pesos <laughs> and a mil in Cougaran somewhere. <laughs> but at the same time, he's got to have film on somebody. He's a creepy well, fuck. What, what would the film do, though? The film, he would sell it to fucking Penthouse or the highest bidder. You got to be kidding me. Can you imagine what a film of, of him naked... If you think fucking... What's the other guy? What's the popular guy that played the harmonica on the podcast? Who played the harmonica on the podcast and freaked you out? Oh, Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Oh, he showed up to one of my shows. If you think Ron Jeremy's fucked up naked now, can you imagine fucking Harvey Weinstein naked with Angelina Jolie sucking that flute? Oh. And him telling him, I'm going to give you three movies. 
suck it hard, and she's licking those balls and shit. Can you imagine if something like that surfaces? So he's got to have some ace in the hole. He's he's just. I never a, thought about it like he's that. He's not in fucking Arizona rehab. He's sitting around with three high-powered fucking Jews, trying to figure out what his strategy is going to be. He's just sitting tight right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Harvey Weinstein hasn't already got a fucking plane ready to drop. Well, here, here's my here's the honest question. Maybe you guys can answer. Like, obviously he's a sick fuck, and I. I'm not. I'm against what he's doing in case they take this clip out. But if you tell a girl to suck your dick to be in a movie, is and they do it, is is that illegal? What's I don't know. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, isn't that a, a gray area kind well, of? It's a gray area because why take the acting lessons? Yeah. You could have saved eight thousand dollars in the school <laughs> of dance, and you'd have to need to play the piano. I mean, I'm, yes. Obviously, it's not cool. But like, what's the what's the line? Listen, I want to know the percentage rate he was running at. How many chicks did suck his dick? If he molested sixty of them. How many chicks did suck his dick and who sucked? This is what you're, the other side of the coin that's going to people are speculating about. And, you know, this is going to get interesting. But let's say London drops the charges and New York picks it up for rape and somebody else. You know, these are all people saying this happened 30 years ago. I don't know how the law works. I don't know the statute of limitations. I don't know what you're going to use for fingerprints or the sample from your vagina the, the underwear, this leftover semen from the ejaculation. Well, I don't know. I just watch Special Victims Unit like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you, yeah. That's it. It's, it's... But right now, he's not getting help. He's talking to a guy 10 minutes a day, and he's in there with his cell. He's an arrogant fuck. And oh, that's, fuck what, that's what got him fucked up. That he's an arrogant fuck. Okay, yeah, she sued him. They give her $3 million. Tell her to shut the fuck up. Sign the contract, that dumb bitch. And then when everybody leaves, he tells his assistant, I got to tell you something. I put it in her ass like four fucking times. She loved it. He's one of those guys. You could tell by looking at him. Oh, yeah, I mean. The type of animal. Like, he, you know. he didn't want to work on his personality at all to actually pick him up. No, 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 no. And I guarantee, listen, he had women that would suck his dick whenever they'd see him. Even if they were involved in the relationship. Even if they're involved in a relationship, they bump into a party, they go there with their husband, they'll tell their husband, excuse me, Howie's going to show me a new kind of his new movie in his studio. Keep talking to Lee. I'll be right back. Two minutes. They go in there, they swallow the sword, they come up with that cum breath, and next thing you know, they got a three-package deal and shit. You know, you got to think about what happened there. So he's a creepy fuck, man. But right now, he's not getting help. Yeah, it sounded like, from the article, like he just like, would take it out. It didn't sound like he was offering it. Like, if you would do this so kindly, yeah, I would give you a movie it, it role. It didn't sound like he was too polite. Let's to say, about let's it. say, let's say, uh, this is the type of dude. I read this one thing. He heard on a movie set from a so-called actor. The actor dated this actress for a while, and they broke up. And I guess after the thing wrapped, they went to a hotel and they were drinking at the bar. And the actor started describing his relationship with this chick and how good their sex life was. And, you know, think about if I tell you how hot this chick is, how good of a dick she sucks, and you're a predator. The next time you see her, what are you going to do? You're a president of a studio. What have I always said, Lee? If I look like Brad Pitt, I can walk around with my dick out all day because I know chicks would bow and speak into the microphone as I walk past their house. You know what I'm saying? You walk down the neighborhood, you got 18 blowjobs and three chicks fainted and passed out from heat exhaustion. <laughs> and from fucking, yeah. You're Brad Pitt. You know, in my mind, Brad Pitt could walk down any street with his dick out and nobody will dial 911. There'll be reports that there was a penis hanging out of his pants. But by the time he hears the sirens, he'll put it in and it was just a shadow of the sun. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's fucked up, but it's true, brother. Oh, yeah. no, that's definitely true. I mean, you're out there doing shows. You really have to watch yourself. You no, really I, I, watch yourself. I, I do, I do, I do. In America watch. today, you know, we were to, both talking about touring and stuff, and I know the difference about how I was living ten years ago. How I would sleep two hours and two days, and then get on a fucking plane first thing in the morning, and it would be like being on the fucking twilight zone, like, being on the fucking twilight zone. Like I was just walking around, and I would get to LAX and take a cab and I probably made 1200 bucks I spent 600 on blow 
You know, I spent a hundred on food, a hundred on the hotel room, a hundred on the cab ride. Now I'm coming home with three hundred dollars to see my fucking girlfriend. She's expecting twelve hundred. I got a mere three hundred. It's tough, man. I used to go on the road just to go fucking bananas. Now I go on the road to write and read and eat two good meals. And you come home with most of the money? I come home with all the money. I don't even think in advance. I don't even think, you know, I don't even think about it. I take and make a deposit when I leave LAX, a cash deposit, I withdraw 200 bucks, and I have my ATM card for the big thing. It's not the whole time you leave your card, and if you want to eat something, you put it on your room. Nobody fucking gets their feelings hurt. And then I get receipts, and I staple my receipts. With my <laughs> thing and I hand them to my wife Sunday night. And she does all the accounting, and here we are talking to each other. Nobody's going to jail. That's the way it is. I don't need a knock on my door telling me at the IRS I own geese. I'm too old to do federal time right now. I ain't got that type of fucking cash to have Leah going up there dropping off envelopes and playing checkers with me. Things get bad. I got a pimp Lee in there behind the walls of debt. And Lompox, the old man, want to tell him old you the stories. Why am I in there now? Because you're my dog. You'll take a bullet for your Uncle Joey. You know that. So, I'm not going in prison. He's going in. You're going with him. No, I'm not taking you in there, but you come in once a week. I have a guy you rub his balls <laughs> and sing him a song and teach him how to podcast. And he gives you the small 300. And you throw where is he, where is he gonna get three hundred? Because bro, for a guy like you, I get five hundred. Promise him, yes, asshole, then we hit him over the head with a stick. <laughs> and and three hundred is not enough. What to feel his balls? Yeah, especially bro. not for like a hand job. Like, no, like, for no it's not a hand job. You're gonna sit on the man's lap and oh. just jiggle his balls through his jeans. <laughs> That's so weird. <laughs> Why is it weird? For three hundred, I, mean, I don't even know how you do that physically. Is he like fully like undressed and he like he's no, he'll hug you like he's Santa? And then he'll tell you how cute you are and he'll rub your head. He'll probably kiss you on the lips once or twice. Oh, this, sounds like it. this actually sounds like fun, man. And then you'll rub his little nuts through his jeans until you can't take it no more. <coughs> and then you'll stick his, your hand down his pants and there'll be like $400 bills. You pull it out. You kiss him on the cheek. You tell him you love him and let him rub your head. He'll try to touch your dick. You hit his hand. You tell him that needs more money. And that to call you if he wants to see you again. And then next time you wear a dress with a small 750, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll work it. We'll keep them out milking. <laughs> Those student loans going real well. The what? Those student loan payments are... Bro, real. I have the student loans payment in fucking oh. three weeks. I'll pimp you out so much. I'll get three little fucking pedophiles that love to play with you. Talk about podcasting and <laughs> Yelp. You can talk about Yelp with them and shit. The importance of Yelp when they get out of prison to choose a good restaurant. You know I love you, my buddy. I would never pimp you out. Not to do sex acts, but to touch an old man's balls. What's the difference? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just to sit on a guy's lap and touch his balls. You sound like you have like experience doing this. No, I'll, I'll, open, I'll, I'll pimp anybody out. You know me. I, listen, I'll, I'll charge him three fifty. You get two fifty. And you get security, and you walk in and out of Where jail. Where do you get $100 for? Because I'm telling you what I'm providing. The security, the booking. What security? The booking that nobody's going to hit you in the head and stick a dick up your ass <laughs> and leave you in prison. That's the last 100 bucks you ever spent, man. I'm going to make sure that you just go in there, watch TV with him. What if that's uh, what he wants to do? What's that? Not, like, what if you, what if you ask security, you're the guy who wants to stick it up my butt? Who, me? I don't know about you personally, no, 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 but you... Me. Now, let's like, say, you're, let's personnel. say you go into the old man's shed, and an inmate comes up to me and says, Joey, how much of a cute little Jew? I'll ask him, what do you want to do? <laughs> I want everything. I want around the world. They go, listen, my Jew don't do around the world. She's a virgin. What I'll let you do is I'll have him pull his pants down, and you can jerk off on his butt cheek. <laughs> And he'll do like a reach around his own nutsack. That's as far as he goes. Really? Well, he really scratches balls from behind. He goes to yoga three times a day. He's a guru. You can't tell by looking at his body. He got hit by a car when he was a kid. And he can't stop eating cheeseburgers. But he's all right beside that. I would get three bills. I would get 750 for you to bend over, hold your ankles. And from three feet away, some guy whack off him with his hands. Just throw the cum at your ass. That's it. <laughs> and afterward, when your ass is wiped, you can hug him and tell him you love him, and that's it. Seven fifty, two of those a day. That's fifteen hundred. Five days a week, 
Are you fucking kidding me? That's good money, man. Just to- You'll fire me. You'll say, I don't want to work on the podcast no more. That's a lot of fucking cash, Lee. Whew. That's like, that's like fucking, that's like 15000 every two weeks. That's 30000 a month. No sex. Bending over and letting guys. What do we call it? What's the website? I don't know. There's no website. No I'm website? Just, How do we market it? This is an imaginary character. In case I ever went to prison and things got bad, we ran out of loot. You know me, we're partners. I, I need for you to fucking not, go behind bars, maybe sell some coke. We have to do things. But if an old Jew inmate comes up to me and says, listen, your friend, he's kind of cute. Can we work some out? Can we make him shave his beard and wear a militant suit? Listen, for the small 350, my friend will do whatever the fuck you need, but you can't do sex. You mean no the sex. small 350? Because, I'm, listen, it's I'm not sorry. enough to do what you're talking about. No, no, 350 to bend over and have a guy do that is disgusting. Anything that with cum involved. No, no, no. The other one when you sit on his lap and watch TV for a half hour. I'm not touching his balls. Listen, what? you're not touching his balls. You're looking the other way, your balance is going to go, <laughs> and you're just going to grab his balls by mistake to pull your back up, and you just give him a smile, and make believe you watch the baseball game again. Everybody loves baseball. You're a crazy person. It's not a crazy person. This, this is the th- fucking best conversation ever. I'm yeah. just thinking about imaginary situations. Look, okay, you're my brother. I'm not in business to pimp you. You're my little brother. I, I got to look out for you. I know Dick Syed. I know your mother. I know the boss over there, El Patron. That's who you call it now, right? I heard you call the other day. When I called, you're like, hold on. Hold on, El Patron. Uh, <laughs> you call El Patron now and shit. Why not? <laughs> Wheeler Walker Jr., you bad motherfucker. What's up, Kicking man? Kicking ass. I congratulate you for all your success. Uh, this last little leg of the tour. Yeah, will, you, gonna, will, gonna, you, will you read these? Fuck yeah. Hey, you can, I, can, can, I, can I film it? Fuck yeah. Let me explain something to you. So, what is the... Uh, these are the last four the, shows. What are you going to do after this? But um, What are your plans after this? I think I'm going to do another record. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's what most people do. Okay, yeah. I didn't think of you. We're going to end it with these. F- we're going to blow it out end of the year. Four big shows. West Coast. And uh, hopefully you and Lee will come to the L.A. show. You know what? Let me look. At December 3rd, I don't know if I'm in Sacramento or the week after. Who the fuck knows anymore? We'll figure it out. It changes every fucking two weeks. If I do this, I'm going to have to wear glasses, all right? So don't get pissed off at me. Oh, I don't care. I can see it from here. You know me. I'm a fucking bad motherfucker. Are you ready? One, two. I'm ready. Are you ready? One, two. Here you go. Wheeler Walker's Juniors. Wheeler Walker's. Wheeler Walker Juniors last shows of the year are the biggest shows ever. Do you understand me? It's old Wheeler Walker, the Pussy King, doing his fucking thing on sale now, cocksuckers. And if you show up, ladies. Watch that monkey. He don't like dirty, stinky monkeys. He likes fucking flip flop. Anyway, sorry, let's start from the top. We'll do it afterward. Don't worry. We'll do it afterward, and then we'll make it happen for you. We'll do it afterward. Trust well, me. I kind of like that. No, no, you don't like it. That I got to have glasses. Let me review it, Okay. and then I'll put a spin on it. I'm a no, professional. No, you don't like it. Huh? I, lo- I fucking love it. You know I'm fucking nuts, dog. I, I don't fuck around. I love you to death. For the people at home, here it is, plain and simple, all right? Here's my brother here. You've heard him on a bunch of podcasts, but most importantly, you've heard his fucking music. And you know he ain't fucking around. This ain't some guy that goes up there like uh, Jimmy Fallon and does dirty. So I got nothing against Jimmy Fallon. God bless his mother and my condolences to him and his family. I'm just saying this is not a guy that goes up there and just plays the guitar and sells out to you with a couple dirty words. You heard his fucking story and you heard what he's going on. But listen, it gets better. It gets better, cocksuckers. Because Wheeler Walker Jr.'s last shows of the year are his biggest shows ever. Do you understand me? It's all Wheeler, the Pussy King, on sale right now, today. No more fucking stories, all right? You're going to go out with your family. You're going to go. You're going to eat Thanksgiving. You're going to have a good time. You're going to eat the jelly. You're going to gain three pounds. And that's when the party starts. You know why? Because Wheeler Walker will be in fucking town. That fucking following week. There's nothing like going to a concert after Thanksgiving when Grandma gives you hundred dollars savings bonds. That's fifty five dollars in the short end. Just in case you got gotta get rid of it to go see my man Wheeler Walker Jr.'s last shows of the year. Here it is, nice and simple. Ready? December third, 
in Los Angeles at the motherfucking Novo. December 4th, Santa Barbara's birthday for the Cuban people. San Diego at the Observatory in North Park. And here you go, December 5th, Santa Ana, Santa Ana, waka, 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 Santa Ana at the motherfucking Observatory, a different one. So bring the fucking 3D glasses if you're 18 and under. You can look at the stars and play with yourself. And then December 6th, you got Phoenix at the motherfucking Van Buren Theater. Dun, 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 dun. That's the Wheel of Walker Jr. fucking lineup. And if you don't go to those shows, listen, I might stab you in the fucking neck personally. That's how I roll, cocksuckers. Go see my brother. Get you, and listen, if you're a fucking girl and you're listening to this and you want to get closer to your boyfriend, get him a fucking ticket for Wheel of Walker. What is he going to do with your money? You're sitting there at home. If your Lee's girlfriend, Lee, wants to go, he wants to spend 700 on tickets. He wants a top-notch fucking ticket. Tell him, Lee. You don't fuck around. You want to park right in front of the joint and have a fucking course. He ain't walk you inside. Only the best, especially for Will Walker. And while we're talking about it, why fuck around anymore? All right, let me talk to you people about something seriously on the up and up because the holidays are coming. The New Year's are coming. And I know everybody wants to eat a little bit fucking healthier. We all want to eat better. We all want to eat healthier. But when it comes to snacks, you know what I'm saying? You don't know. It feels like the, the whole world is delicious. And it, it it's all 10 million calories versus what? You want to eat an almond, whatever. Anyway, boring and tasteless. It doesn't have to be that way. Up your snack game with Nature Box. Do you understand me? Nature Box has over 100 snacks that taste good and are actually better for you. All snacks are made from high quality, simple ingredients, which means no artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners. No guilt, no nothing. So you can feel good about what you're eating. My favorites, all, all the chocolate nom noms, the praline pumpkin seeds, the raw almonds, the roasted salted almonds. Listen, the list goes on and on. They got some stuff. That kills me. Do you understand me? And sometimes I order the same stuff, and sometimes I take a chance. Like the crispy coconut squares, or the double chocolate brownie cookies, or the vanilla bean wafers. You have no idea. My wife and my daughter tear those motherfuckers up like somebody from a third world nation eating this little, uh, a turkey for the first time, or whatever the fuck it is. The sea salt pop pops, the coffee kettle. Listen, the list goes on and on and on. All right, do me a favor. You're sure to find your new snack obsession at Nature Box. They add new snacks every month, inspired by real customer feedback like yours on the latest food trends and professional chefs. So it's simple. Go to naturebox.com, choose the snacks you want, and Nature Box will deliver them. You ready for this one? Right to your door. All right? Nobody knows nothing. It's on the up and up. They'll be there within days, and there's no risk. If you try a snack you don't like, don't eat it. Nature Box will replace it for free. Now, here's how it works. This is what I'm going to do for you tonight. The Nature Box is offering the Church of What's Happening Now family. Right now, today, 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash Joey. Again, that's naturebox.com slash Joey for 50% off your first order. That's half. Delivered to your door. No games. Naturebox.com slash Joey. I want to thank my brother. Wheeler Walker Jr. for coming in here and dropping knowledge and my main little Christ killer who I would never pimp out. This is just a... I've been watching too much of that prison show. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. It got away from me. Thank you again for having me. This oh, was please. my favorite show. It's You're just, my fucking family. Dog. This is... this. I love you guys. And it was and, a um, pleasure showing you those videos to, um, to let you know the mental state. All, I just love the podcast. Just watching it a lot. It's just like watching your favorite show a lot. It's we like... It's, around, this man. is This is Skinner for me. Well, I appreciate that, my brother. Thank you again. Don't forget, next Tuesday, the Comedy Store. Link should be up, 8 o'clock show. Listen, we need to fucking the paratroopers there. I need Loguerrero there. You understand me? The motherfuckers who ain't fucking around down there. Leo be there. We got stars. We got explosives. It's going to be a fucking good night. Worst case scenario, Leo take it, eat hummus, but that's none of my business. I don't want to know about it. I love you, motherfuckers. I love Wheeler Walk. Again, support his tour. Is there a website, cuz? Yeah, wheelerwalkerjr.com. Bam! There you go. Wheelerwalkerjr.com. Stop fucking around. My brother Lee, kick that motherfucking meal. It's Tuesday morning, motherfuckers. Thank you for listening to the church.